Okay, so um, you should be able to see mission briefing, but in case you can, I'll ah. read it anyways. Um, yeah. Due to rising tensions between the United Americas and the Union of Progressive Peoples, the Canadian Colonial Armed Forces Spec Ops team from the 212th Covert Ops Detachment, Task Force Reaper, is sent on a highly classified mission to assassinate a UPP general, Gel General Alexander Severov, with a plot to launch a preemptive strike on a UA colony. The operation, Operation Dusk Wings, is strictly unlisted and unrecognized by the government of the United Americas with no backup or support whatsoever. If the members of Task Force Reaper are captured or killed, the government will go for deniability and have you labeled as renegades who went AWOL. Um, to ensure the success of the mission, the best soldiers from the 212th were handpicked for this mission. Some of you knew each other prior to the operation, and it's up to you to decide who, but keep in mind you all don't necessarily know each other because you were handpicked. Um, and you will be arriving at your target, LV-416, aboard the USS Castaneda. And then from there, you will board the dropship Wildfire and deploy to the surface of LV-416. Nobody will return to the Castaneda until Severov lies, lies dead. So. Uh, and then, and so. Oh, wait, hold on. What's going on here? Okay, so. Um, yeah, if you guys have the private messages thing, uh nailed down so um and then if and if you don't then it's just like whisper uh cody and then so like slash w whatever okay so now i will send over the first acts of the agenda and then while you, you just look them over um i will read the intro well not the intro but like the first event okay so uh, romero is um scroll down Damn it. Um, okay, why is it not letting me scroll down in the thing? All right, wait, wait. Here it is. Okay, so Lux is Romero. All right, so Lux, you should be able to see this. Uh, hold on. What? A... It's in journal Romero number one. Oh, yeah. Got okay. It. So you can see that. All right. So then next, uh, Joey is Duncan. So, um, all right. All right. So Joseph. All right. So. Oh, well, hold on. Let me just double check this real quick. Um, yeah. So. So you should be able to see that. All right. Now. Um, Cassidy. Um, my character name does not show up under my uh, my avatar on the bottom left. And I don't know why. Uh, did you change it in the options? Uh, yeah, in the chat as Lieutenant Rico. You have to change your display name, like mm -hmm. under my settings. Oh. Mm. All right, so. Yeah, might have to do it then. And then for chatting, yeah, then there's a little box for it, but you do have to change your... Alright, so Cassidy, okay, and then next, um, what we call it, uh... There we go. So, yes, Get the job done. Right, well, so there you go. What are those short thingies stands for? What things? Uh, the... Corporal, Sergeant, Lieutenant. Uh, okay. Yeah, CPL, that's Corporal, Sar SGT, Sergeant, and then LT is Lieutenant, so... Um, I just abbreviated the ranks so you know who's who. Um, Alright, so, and then the key is, um, Wesker, so, Sergeant McKee. Because here I am, just, I mean, I'm just taking it cautiously because I don't want to accidentally send somebody's agenda to the wrong person. Um, yeah, no worries. Alright, and then lastly, yeah. and then Trent is, um, Corporal Cooper, okay. Just quickly remind me again, I always get Corporal and Sergeant confused, which one outranks which. So uh, it goes Corporal, around. Sergeant, Lieutenant, <laughs> yeah. from lowest to highest. Okay, so I remembered. Okay. Hudson's a, Hudson's a private, Hicks was a Corporal, Apone was a Sergeant, Gorm was a Lieutenant. Correct. That should uh, hopefully give you chain of command. Alright, so, um, as for the Corporal opening. Sergeant, Lieutenant. Yep. Alright, so, um... The USS Castaneda arrives in orbit near LV-416's moon because the ship's presence could trigger planet-side radar. 
Uh, since you've been in hypersleep for quite a while, uh, you're going to be kind of fatigued and you're going to want to head to the mess hall to get uh, get some food and water before you head off on your mission. So just kind of coming out of hypersleep and just do your thing. So. Good morning, men and women. Let's get moving. Come on, people. Time to hydrate. Time to take a piss, take a shit, whatever you want to do be dropping soon so get some fluids in your system come on sure <laughs> just tell me where to aim <laughs> Jesus. i'll prepare for endless references now yeah hey the book says you know make as many references as you can yeah pretty sure they turned that into banter yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of banter, um, I will say that the script that I have kind of has, there are uh, two main uh, moments for banter, but you can kind of do whenever you want. But uh, the two main, uh, both for banter and strategy talk, uh, it can be during breakfast, during the combat drop, or when you land on LV-416. But in the meantime, you're heading to the uh, mess hall to, you know, hydrate. Um, and by doing this, you know, there's no food or water required in scenario, so. Alright. Well, I'm just, uh, getting all cleaned off in that freezer. Putting on, uh... Slippers? At least a uniform, some slippers. <laughs> <laughs> just making my way to the mess hall, I got a good cup of joe. What the fuck? Sorry, I don't reckon. <laughs> it's Alan Rickman on our squad. Just my phone. Sergeant Rickman. And I also should mention, I can't remember if I said it in the chat, but um, due to agendas and stuff, because I didn't really write any like topics for the characters, feel free whenever you're having breakfast to just kind of chat about whatever. So. All right. So, what was everyone's uh, everyone's special uh, specialty? Okay. Here, so, who took what? Um, so, going kind of left from right. So, Duncan is the auto rifleman. He's not a smart gunner. He has um, a heavy pulse rifle. Uh, okay. Uh, McKee is your technician. So she's basically like Hudson in terms of hacking and cutting through doors and stuff. Demolitions. What? Demolitions too? No, just. Um, like, I mean, unless a pulse rifle grenade la launcher counts, but... Uh, um, does McKee have a shovel? Uh, no. Um, but, right. uh, Trent uh, Cooper is the medic. Uh, okay. Heather Cassidy yeah. is the marksman, the sniper. And you are a squad lead. So, so you're going to be kind of calling the shots here. That's what I signed up for. Yep. I mean, they, uh... They Come on, everybody. Hydrate your asses. You want us to literally stick water up our ass? <laughs> yep. Whatever gets it done for you, I don't shame you for your kinks of your free times. Roger that. Lieutenant? Who's speaking here? Oh, uh, what do you mean? Yeah. I want to refer lieutenant or corporal. Fuck, I don't know. You're the only lieutenant yep. here. Oh yeah, shit. Sergeant. Yeah. Did you forget you were in yeah. charge, Cap, or I what? all the lower shit confused all the fucking yeah, that's time. That's horrible. Even though I did Arma. I'm still good. <laughs> so good, I, yeah. I, I, was, I was part of Chair Force. I never went into the field with them. Well, that was the first time for everything. Hmm. Yeah, however you want to hydrate, I don't care. Just yeah. be sure to be ready in five. Come on, people. So can I um, take my cup and uh, get up to mother or something? Um, well, I mean, there's no... Uh, I mean, no just, I am kind of basing a little bit of this off of aliens because they didn't really consult with mother. <clears throat> All right. But so anyway, so uh, you do what you got to do and you... Oh, sorry. Yeah, but any, uh, <coughs> like... Any remote sensing or data, I can uh, take a good glance at, you know? Um, none available just yet. Alright. Um, but anyway, so you 
<coughs> um, sorry. <coughs> Damn it. Um, but you head to the, you all head to the mess hall after, or assuming you weren't already there. Um, yeah. But you're just kind of in the mess hall, and uh, it should be mentioned that, uh, like I stated it before, but uh, you were not necessarily all part of the same unit. So, the people around you are strangers, and you, you figure you ought to kind of get to know each other, share some backstories, interests, just kind of, you know, see who you could potentially be dying along with. That's what it's all about. Is it uh, already assigned that, like, which members are, like, buddies and rivals? Came from the come from the same um well i mean that's kind of up to you like i never explicitly state who's who um mm -hmm. i mean some of the bios state like you know you kind of don't really trust like some of them say you don't trust certain people but you know that's not set right. in stone so you know you like you kind of pick and choose what parts i mean there's some parts that are obviously kind of mandatory but um especially if they if your agendas match that um, but, you know, otherwise you're just kind of finding out who, uh, you know, who your buddies and rivals are. Okay. I mean, this is my, uh, first, uh, uh, game, and I'm just kind of doing things a little experimentally, so. All right. I'll Morning, tell you. Cooper. Morning. There you go. How's the leg? <laughs> Functioning. Oh, function. It's one of those mornings, huh? Mm. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Key, Can you pass me the cornbread. Get your own goddamn cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded <laughs> just like Frost. Great way to start to your lieutenant. Right? You just sounded like. Are you lieutenant? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. The first fucking interaction of the day. <laughs> Sounds about Get your right. own corn, bro. Your own fucking corn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine you jumping on the table and huddling around the cornbread, protecting it like your first fork. <laughs> <laughs> that might be something Corporal Adam might do. <laughs> oh, really? So why you hand me over the cornbread, Sergeant? Sir, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Like some, uh, some of this good, Miss Cassidy? I think I'll pass for now. Oh, uh, sure. And yeah. Cooper likes it, don't you? You ate, like, a ton of this shit back when you were in French. That's not exactly a glowing recommendation. Well, this stuff is paradise, I swear to God. I need well, some peanut eating... butter. We have been digging and eating bugs for two months in the trench because you're pinned down because there's no reinforcements or cast support incoming. Well, anything that's cornbread will taste like having you. Trust me. Oh, well, I think you've never been to jail, Lieutenant. I prefer a uh, says... rat myself. You go for, you go for the, um, the squishy ones or like the, the crunchy bugs. <laughs> the steaks, exactly. It's important. In jail. You know, you have to find the ones that are like kind of in between size. You know, roast them just for like a bit. Doesn't matter where. We used to, uh, like, for some reason, supply always gave us all this fuel for the flamers. We didn't have any range, whatever, so with the things, so we couldn't use them. So we fried all the bugs with that. <laughs> it was great. It's like a fucking marshmallow campfire. <laughs> yeah, Cooper. I remember you left the bread a lot more than those bugs. Yeah, I'll take just turning on my fan. <clears throat> Of course. Well, you should have known, uh... Change their nicknames in Discord over to their character names, so we know who's talking. Oh, yeah. Because it's not Good showing one. up, um, on Roll20, because we're not doing receivers. What? Uh, and what? that way I won't tell the lieutenant to fuck off anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How can I change? Um, uh, right-click, change nickname. Oh, yeah. There we go. Discord, please implement a quick switch system between several nicknames so i'm just kind of in the corner doing exercises martial arts ones change your nickname man. i did you did i did 
call Carlos. Oh, uh, a Discord, we mean. So you can uh, get a reference for who's uh, talking. Oh, you mean like changing our nicknames in Discord? Yeah, we were going to do that, right? Oh, yeah, I, I, did. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't aware oh. of it. I mean, if you want it, then go ahead. Uh, but... I thought you meant that because now you can actually see boys' activity. And... Yeah, now you see when I was talking, you see who it is. Which is you can start to link helpful. voices to names, so. Yeah. I'll I'll go with it. You guys do whatever you want, but if I call you corporal and you're a sergeant, oh, don't what? get pissed what at me. Do? Especially not if I ask for the cornbread. <laughs> uh, okay, so I actually. What? Alright, whatever. Yeah, it would be great on this cornbread trooper. One of those bugs. Like, you found like a <laughs> nest that day. Remember? We were like two weeks in. And were, you were like leaning against that wall. And then one of those planks fell away. And it was like all oh, this shit crawling up. There was like 20 of those big ones. Remember? Like with the, the purple shiny shields in the back. Yeah, it those was. Those uh... fucking great. Those are absolutely delicious. You mean the squirters? Yeah. Well, you, you have to. You have to, like, you have to grab them by the back. Like, twist that end up, you know? And don't squeeze it too hard, otherwise your hand is going to be boils and all that shit for the next four hours. It's going to be horrible. But anyway, great stuff. Mm. Those were the best. We went through those in, like, like a day or two, so... It was back to, like, the horrible crunchy ones with, like, little legs that got stuck between your teeth. And... Oh, fuck. Then the supply. Then they actually flew over, got some supplies dropped in there that didn't go immediately go to enemy hands. So we had cornbread after that. Although oh, I'll never forget those purple ones. You know, like no judgment. You could eat whatever let... you want, but I'll live from that. We should probably let others finish breakfast. Oh, what do you mean? Oh yeah. Sorry for the. Not everyone loves these delicacies, do you? Delicacies. Ah, uh, you've not been in combat until you make your own meals like that. To that end, I hope you all know why the hell you went into these freezers before we went, went out. We know what we need to. Alright. So, um... And then I should uh, mention by this point, I mean, admittedly, I should have written it on a note card, but uh, so the lieutenant is going to have to explain just how important the mission is. And yep. it would basically I just. Do a briefing. Yeah, like the briefing, you know, you could do it here, like when we head to the dropship hangar, but um, it's basically kind of exposition in your own words on the intro. And if you want, you can kind of go back and look at the intro card. Oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give it a twist. Okay. Um, so after you finish breakfast, uh, you head down to the dropship hangar, and in the dropship uh, hangar there's one dropship, and there's a guy standing behind it. The guy is the pilot, uh, Sergeant Matt Walker, and uh, his dropship is a specially modified UD-4 with stealth coating, I mean not like invisibility, but just like black uh, coating, and like, basically like the Blackhawks that SEAL Team 6 used, stealth. but... Yeah, so it's like okay. harder to detect on radar, but it's got minimal weaponry, stronger engines, and uh, it is basically designed to get you onto the planet really quickly, as opposed to being like close air support. Um, so by this point, uh, Romero decides to give the squad a briefing. So take it away, Romero. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get around. Let's get a few things straight here. So. Thank you all for joining me. As you might all know, our mission is one of utmost secrecy, and we cannot have any kind of crap, so be sure to make sure that you know who you're talking to is informed about this. Not everyone who we passed through, um, who cleared us for all this stuff back home even knows what we were going to do. So these things between us and, be uh, and outside of these circles these things we're gonna do never happen. <laughs> All right. So you might have noticed that we have rising tensions with the UPP, which is why we are being deployed here. We're here for General Alexander Severov. 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 <laughs> we're here for him on highly classified mission. Simple one thing: put a bullet in his head. Why I want to do this? 
Well, Top Brass thinks there is a very good reason he's going to plot a launch very soon on UA colonies nearby. Which is why we're here, Operation Duskwings. We will have no backup or support whatsoever. Let that be clear. We will be nameless bodies. And we won't be packing back back home. No glory, no metal. You won't be known. This is clearly up the books. This is black op black ops as we can get. We leave us leave us one wrong trace behind. This is gonna start a big conflict, and we do not want to get ourselves involved in that. Been entrusted with this, and I trust you all to fill your part, follow my lead, and make sure that we clear this nice and easy. Exfil, I forget this ever happened. Any questions? Hey, Sergeant, do we have an overlay of the compound? Let me reference my talking information to earlier. <laughs> Okay, so, <clears throat> due to a lack of intel on the precise location of Severov's base, uh, a crew member will meet, need to make a ComTech roll to discern its location. You're going to go aboard the dropship to do that, uh, because UA Intelligence only mapped the UPP's base location sector-wise, but they weren't able to get a precise reading on its location on the planet. Um, so, I guess, you know, whoever has the highest ComTech, I believe it's uh, McKee, Yep. Um, make a contact roll for me, and if uh, you get a success, then it maps the. Okay. Uh, so you get a um, you get the location of the base um, on the surface of the planet. It's currently in a zone at like on the side of the planet, facing away from the sun. So it's nighttime on that side. Um, Perfect. So. Uh, is there anything that anybody wants to do before you take off? I, I do, yeah. The general terrain of the planet, climate, atmosphere. If there's any normal Gs, it is lower, higher. So, uh, the, the uh, condition of the planet, and by the way, I should mention, like, you know, if you, uh, like, if there's anything you want to do, just, like, specifically just, uh, DM or, like, private message me or whatever. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the topography and weather of LV-416, it's kind of like LV-426. It's breathable, it's kind of stormy. I mean, it's not consistently stormy, but there are storms that uh, happen at times. Um, and it does have a breathable atmosphere. Um, so it is doable as far as the planet goes. It's not exactly like a very like utopian perfect planet, but it's not as rough as LV-426. Gravity is about the same as, you know, on Earth. Got uh, no vegetation then either? No, it has vegetation. Um, Alright. So. What is it like? Uh, the ve vegetation? Yeah. Uh, it's tropical. So you got, like, tropical. a lot of... Okay. I got I'll a lot of, like... Cover. Yeah, like, a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, palm trees and, uh... Uh, which we call it, like large ferns and stuff on the ground in terms of like shrubbery. So mm. um, you know, definitely fauna. Any uh, uh, local local wildlife is, unknown. Yeah. All right. Because you um, were able to get like a basic surface layout of the planet, um, or at least like in terms of its environmental conditions. Um, but um, as stated before, you didn't know where Severov's base is. Um, because you were able to get basically like a like a three second glance of the planet to get as much uh, valuable info as you can, just so you're All not right. like dropping well, into some lava planet or something. Yeah, I would prefer to uh, not go Mustafar on this. Yep. All right, Lieutenant. This is Corporal Adams here. Since we don't know the general's compound, can I get a uh, a closer range gun and maybe a flashlight? Do whatever you want to do, Corporal. Yeah, and so outside yeah, of character, is that is that possible? Uh, to do what exactly? To grab another weapon, like a closer range weapon and a flashlight. Uh, well, I mean, if you can, uh, well, okay. So here's the thing. So, um, we you know, you've been assigned uh, the weaponry that you're best at, kind of like you're you're the there aren't there isn't room for any unknown variables. Uh, and unknown variables can include like somebody trying to use something else and 
like giving away the position. Like for example, you cannot bring a flamethrower on a on a stealth mission if that's what you had in mind. Dang. So, Not at all. Just so, because I don't know. Though. So are you talking? I mean, what are you talking about? Like a pistol? I'm trying to think tactically since I don't know the building. Like yeah. um, as a soldier, I'd probably think maybe a couple, like an extra shotgun or something, just because I don't know if it's going to be close range. Well, Cooper has a shotgun, so. Does anyone have thermals, or do we all have MVGs? Can we assume that, or? Uh, yeah, you can. You can assume flashlights. That. Like you, you have yeah, right. the mean, you have the means of seeing in the dark. Whatever it is is up to you. So, like oh, thermal, okay. like thermal right. goggles, or I mean, like night vision goggles, or um, like flashlights or something like that. Um, we're stuck with what we got. Is that it? But now, stuck with the weapon we got. Then there's nothing yeah. else on the ship. Yeah, okay. You're, you're just kind of you're given a very light loadout, just so you're not burdened down with a bunch of stuff. Like because I'd like a melee weapon, weapon if possible. Uh, yeah, you can, I guess you can just give yourself a knife, so just mark down a combat knife on your sheet. Um, if you need the stats of it, um, I have those written down. Um, Are we landing during the day or the during the night? During night. Yeah, I'll put we have a for knife in there vision. Well. For vision? Yeah, what do we have? Well, like I said, you have, see. it's, it's up to you. Uh, MVGs, uh, flashlights, you know, whatever you can... Yeah, but so if you want the stats on the combat knife, uh, a knife has no bonus, a damage of two, and a weight of one half, so. Alright. So, I mean, I'm willing to grant you knives because, you know, it's a stealth mission and knives are, like, takedowns, so. Does the NVG grant any bonuses to attacking something at night, then? Uh... I don't even think NVGs are, like, in the book, per se. I mean, they could be, but sure. I haven't seen them before. But, you know, they, it's basically just like a vision device, like a flashlight. Except the, the difference is it's just thematically appropriate, because, you know, you are a spec ops team. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to go uh, in there with flashlights. Yeah, because that, too. Flashlights would kind of, you know, you can see the beam, anybody who's played Arma. It up so. your night vision, and it shows everyone where the hell you are. Yeah, exactly. So, so at least sometimes energy. you have lasers and stuff like that you can see through yeah, the, the um, infrared lasers so I mean you can if you really want a flashlight for whatever reason then you can have Ooh, we got this. IR laser nice yeah um, okay so I mean they don't give any accuracy bonus like in games but they um, you, you know, can at least see yeah you know what you're shooting the at. enemies so what what kind of uh, what, what do we know what kind of equipment the uh, the enemy has um, yeah, there's standard UPP, uh, gear. I mean, they carry AKs, they have body armor, kind of like the M3 armor. Oh. Um, so, you know, they're not... So we're gonna keep, uh, we're gonna keep a good light discipline here, people. No, uh, laser designators. Yeah. No flashlights. Yeah, because you're not... This Just is, uh, passes. highly militarized, uh, military. Yeah, I'm not gonna shine around with, uh, IR pointers. Yeah. Then. Because yeah, uh, you're not fighting like the just... uh, the Jahar or anything like that, so yeah. Um, especially where you know the mission statement is just generally to kind of get down there, get the guy in GTFO. Um, you have the means for prolonged combat, but once you engage, they're probably going to send a lot at you. And if they send we're armored gonna, vehicles, we're going to keep this quiet. Yeah. Um, and if you want to role play that you have suppressors or something, then I mean, feel free to do that. But oh, great, great. Because I, I mean, I didn't really specify that. Um, so, is there anything anybody else uh, needs to do? Needs to do or wants to do? Nope. No, okay. I it's time to drop. That's it. All right, for so, me. after addressing uh, the stuff that you dealt with before, the squad boards wildfire and the pilot. Um, lifts the dropship off and you leave the Castaneda and so you know where it is because you mapped the location of the general's base into the dropship flight computer so it's basically on autopilot and uh, the drop I mean it's not going to be as long as the one in Aliens so I mean if you have anything else to discuss any prayers to make or anything like that then uh, do so or you can take a cue from Corporal Hicks and just sleep so I'm not doing much, just staying alert. Okay, so is that kind of the general consensus? 
<laughs> yeah, I might be checking over my gun or something. Alright, so just kind of inspect, inspecting your gear, doing something like that. Okay, so, <clears throat> yeah, about, say, 30, 45 minutes later, um, the wildfire touches down in a clearing in the middle of a forest on LV-416. So, I mean, I already mentioned what it's like before. It's kind of, it's, you know, it's really dark. Uh, there is no moonlight, and, um, you know, it's forested. The forest is pretty quiet, other than kind of a light wind going through it. Um, and so, due to a lack of foresight, the pilot uh, leaves the dropship to take a leak. And while he's away... You know, he doesn't immediately exfil? What the fuck? Well, I mean, he's just going to kind of, you know, he, the dropship's hidden in the forest. So, oh, Christ. So I'll take it out of here. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he's not going to just bail on you. <laughs> oh, um, but that's, that's not, uh, okay. Oh. Right. Um, yeah, that's fine. So anyways, he's, uh, yeah, he's AFK, and so, you know, you have any, uh, you have the time to, you know, like, you have, like, one last shot of doing anything you need to do, so. All right, people, I are on. Make sure you got your strobes, your laser pointers, flashlights tucked away, turned off. We're going to be dead quiet from here on out. And so then Romero informs Task Force... I assume we oh. uh, have, of course, short-range radio. Uh, yeah, you, you have... Well, you have radios built into uh, your... All right, good. Uh, yeah. uh, your, um, whatchamacallit... Uh, your, like your suits, you know, your your helmets have oh, okay. comm links. All right. Um, because then we don't have to shout; you can just whisper. Yeah. Um, so you head off. Um, and you know, it's just kind of a quiet march for the most part. All right, people. I mean, because it's it's two kilometers. Well, you don't really have to stay silent the whole time. I mean, obviously you can't just have like a casual conversation the whole time, but, uh, cause you do have to stay alert. Yeah. Um, single there, file people. Yeah. There could be, open. there could be patrols lurking in the woods. There could be mines, you know, you don't really know what, so you just kind of have to keep, keep alert. Um, uh, I'm going to range away from the group and keep an eye out. Not too far. Okay. But just enough that I can keep an eye out for anything that's going around, and then I circle the group. Okay. Uh, everyone, make sure you pick a buddy. Stick with them. All right, so, um, well, I mean, it is a group of five, so it's, there's going to be a group of two and a group of three. So, uh, Lieutenant, it's up to you how to divvy people up. Mm. I should mention that uh, two people have uh, motion trackers. Um, I have one. Have... Okay, so Trent has Who one, else? Trent Cooper, and then uh, McKee, yeah. Chelsea McKee. She has she has one, if I remember correctly. So. All right. Cooper, Adams, you're with me. Key, Cassidy. All right. Hold up. No, that doesn't work with the rank. Um, look, McKee and Cooper have the things, right? Uh, yeah, McKee and Cooper have motion draggers. All right. Cassidy, Cooper with me. Key and Adams get together. Be nice. Okay. <laughs> so, just uh, generally try to stick together. Just uh, yeah. <laughs> buddies and all that. So uh, you're just kind of continuing to go through the forest. You notice that it is kind of quiet, uh, but that is generally because there aren't like. To the best of your knowledge, there isn't really anything out in the woods. You don't really hear yeah, anything. Yeah, what do we see around us uh, when we well, the, watch through IR? Just see. Um, uh, you, you know, you're just seeing nothing but the uh, the bushes and trees around you. All right. So and you're not really hearing much. You just hear the wind just kind of lightly blowing, the, the foliage kind of rattling around, and that sort of thing. Then... However, as you're getting kind of close to the enemy base, you hear something moving around in the bushes in front of you, and it's moving very fast. Is it coming towards us? Yes. 
Anyone specifically hear it, or are we all equally hear it? Uh, you all hear it about the same time. Is this, like, suddenly very close, or...? It's getting very close, very fast. Like, it's almost like you just suddenly heard it, and then it's only about, like, 20 feet away from you. I am. What now? What's the ambient light situation? Um, I mean, it's nighttime, but you have uh, night vision goggles on. I'll look, I'll, I will look at the noise with them. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I let everyone know it's just, you know, form, from like a wedge formation, like, uh, guns and hold. Yeah, I take my gun off safety and aim it towards the noise. So yeah, then, so oh, sorry. We're wedge formation facing the noise. Okay. We're holding. I'll, I'll actually, I'll assume the overwatch. Alright. So, we're, we're, yeah, we're watching. So the no, so the uh, the uh, the sound of the noise is getting closer. If you have motion trackers out, they're kind of pinging louder and louder. A UPP soldier, unarmed and very badly wounded, comes unexpectedly charging forward, panting very heavily. Her eyes are widened, filled with horror, as though she'd just seen a ghost. Between gasps for air, she attempts to s tell the squad about what she was running from, but due to a language barrier, because she's speaking Russian, her words aren't understood, and she eventually uh, collapses to ground face first. Cooper checks her pulse. The woman is dead, and with her death, the death of the squad's only lead as to what attacked her. Plus two stress for all PCs. Holy shit. Two stress? Two. Whoa. Oh. Wow, that's brutal. Oh, that's a good start. Well, at least I don't have to give the order to kill her. Uh, yeah, something else. Anyway. Something else beats you can to we, it. Um, yeah, Cooper, can you? Uh, can Cooper? Like, how does it work with observing and inspecting wounds? Like, um, I mean, I yeah. guess you can just do an observation roll if you'd like. Who's best at observation then? Uh, uh, probably. Can, yeah, can Cooper not roll for med for med tech as an observation, as in like determining the cause of death? Or what the injuries are. My observation is pretty low. It's only five. Yeah, but roll with <clears throat> your medic because. Okay. Oh, um, how does that work? Like observing, like determining the cause of injuries and all that. Well, stuff. I mean, just roll for observation, and if you get a success, I'll I'll just let you know. Okay, it was best at observation here. I've got five total. Got a five? What else? Anyone higher than five? I nope. also have okay. five. Oh, uh, well, Cooper, then go for it. Observe. Okay, so um, do an observation roll for me, please. Oh, Ooh. a uh. panic? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, yeah, so this obviously the side of gonna push that. <laughs> I cannot push that. Oh. Well, oh yeah. I, oh yeah, I right. You, because you just did that. You panic. So, um, I guess does that mean you do a panic roll? Oh, that should be fine. Okay. So why can't she push it? I don't understand. Because you panic. Uh, panic. Yeah. You can't, thought... push, you can't push on a panic. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, you know, you're fine, but the thing is that you got kind of stressed out because you totally were not expecting a woman that looked like she got mauled by a bear to just come out of nowhere and, like, just be, like, all frantic and scared. Mm -hmm. Great. So. Uh, yeah, you all have plus two stress as a result of, uh, you know, seeing the woman that looked like she got attacked by something, but you don't know what attacked her. And because, you know, because you don't, none of you speak or understand Russian, uh, you don't really understand, a, a, you don't understand a single thing that came out of her mouth. Um, so anyway, you, you know, after that, uh, uh, no, you don't, um, but you continue to go through... The forest, you're kind of, your nerves are a little bit shot. Is she dead or alive? The woman? Yeah, she's uh, dead. Yeah, she dropped face first, and, uh, like I said, Cooper, Cooper checked her pulse, and, yeah, she, she bled out, or she died of shock. Um, okay, can I check on her body, her person? 
for gear? You want to search or? Uh, anything, yeah. Oh yeah, good one. Um, I don't know Go what kind of roll it, that would uh... be. Like, what do you guys think? Probably observation or survival. Okay. What are the wits? Most likely. Oh, it's, it's observation. Yeah, okay, so roll for observation and then... Okay. Survival is really resisting environments and all yeah. that, so... Any Survival modifiers? Is a bit of a niche one. Uh, any modifiers? No. Um, ah. nothing. So you check the body, and there's you nothing. She didn't push it if you want. Hold on, there's a six on the screen though. Oh, I don't there's see two sixes. I don't see six. I just see. Uh, there uh, might be something wrong here. Yeah, it shows sixes on my. Okay, well, um, all right, I'll take it's your five. word for it. So, anyways, you search. Well, maybe my answer is going to be the same, but <laughs> you. So you search the body, and there's nothing of value. She lost her rifle, and at some point. She did not have a sidearm, and her armor is, like, ripped to shreds. Not that it matters, because you have your own armor, but, um, you know, there's pretty much nothing on her, so. Um, okay. Is anybody else uh, going to do anything right now? I mean, there's not much to do, but, I mean, if you, I mean, you, you can discuss it if you want, but, uh, like, just kind of speculate. Oh, why'd no, you go for range combat? I'm just gonna leave the body, not try to conceal it. She dropped dead of her own accord. We try to hide it, and it's a shitty job. And then we'll definitely know something is up. We'll just keep uh, keep moving forward. Everyone eyes, ears open. Because uh, it seems like wildlife might not be too friendly. Just make sure you have that IR turned on. And, uh, old Cooper and Adams, or McKee, who had the motion tracker? Uh, Cooper and McKee yep. have motion trackers. Yeah. yeah. So, Corporal, Sergeant, make sure to uh, keep an eye on the trackers. Tana, this is more than just a little wildlife. This, this fucking, she's dead. Yep, she is. But we're also here to do our own job, so we have to keep moving forward. Wedge formation, keep an eye on your buddies, ears, eyes open. Let's do it, people. All right. So and remember which one, oh, uh, which end points towards the enemy. All right. Um, so you continue through the forest, and eventually you reach Severov's base. But instead of armed patrols and emplacements, you find nothing but blood and gore. The body is in armor of the soldiers, as well as their surroundings, all drenched in blood. There are no signs. Wait, 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 hold oh. on. What? Uh, a little slow down. Oh, I'm sorry. So you get to the base, but there aren't any guards. There are just the remains of guards. Oh, Bodies wow. and armors of soldiers, all drenched in blood. There are no signs of a third party showing up in a firefight ensuing. Instead, it would appear that something carved its way through the guards. Ten UPP, de or dead UPP troopers are present, or at least what's left of them. Alright, so I hold up my fist and I want to scan the compound with my what observation, right? Um, I want to see if there's any sort of, like, remaining enemies or if there's anyone left alive. But okay, I don't okay. want to enter yet. Okay, so, so we hold at the, um, yeah, we a signal to hold at the tree line and uh, call us, uh, so we can uh, scan the surroundings. Severus probably um, did that already. Also, assume when I, when I say hold that you set up 360 or at least one or two people are watching our backs while we do that. So we can uh, not be sneaked up on. Okay, so uh, out of curiosity, uh, Duncan. And by the way, I know I kind of jump between first and last names. So, um, but so Duncan grabs a dead soldier's AK and he removes its magazine, revealing a completely full magazine. He goes to another soldier and checks his weapon. And it's the same thing. These mags are full, he announces. These guys got hit hard and fast. Nobody got off a single round before they all got taken out. What kind of rounds are in the magazine? Are they standard full metal jacket? or? Um, yeah, they're just like... I mean, I, I don't know what the hell the AK caliber and uh, the AK-4047 is. But, you know, they're just um, basic AK mags with, like, say... Uh, if they're based on the pulse rifle, then I'd say they're like 10... Nine or ten millimeter. Um, okay. So, is Are they worth any money? Um. <laughs> so hold on, let me check the. Knock it off, Corporal. 
Oh, okay, so let's see the rifles. Hey, we're not all lieutenants, but Lieutenant Pay, Lieutenant. Yeah. So the AK, um, the cost, like the value of an individual AK forty forty seven is five hundred bucks, and a reload or like a magazine is five percent of that. And I suck at math, so if you want to do the, yeah, we're not gonna fuck it. We're not window shopping here. Yeah. Also, is Corporal Corporal Adams doing this alone? Uh. Yeah, he was the one who was well, he, he was the, the first one. I mean, be on his ass or buddy team. They're both out. Should be both out there. Well, I mean, you're all like all these guys are basically just dead in front of the base doors. Um, and yeah, so we're holding at the tree line, right? So. Um, yeah. So yeah, everybody's just kind of uh, looking around, seeing if there's anything of value. But um, it's basically just a bunch of guys with shredded armors and blood-soaked assault rifles. All so, right. um, I want to roll observation to see, uh, well, or can we already see if there's any cameras or whatsoever? Or do we have to roll observation for that? Um, the uh, you don't have to because if you look carefully, um, there are not any spotlights. There are no like there are there are CCTV cameras, but the lights aren't on. So the Cameras are offline, pretty much, or as so far as you can tell. All right. Oh, we should probably go home. Uh, At this absolutely. point, our assassination absolutely target not. might be dead already. This general's fucking toast, <laughs> Lieutenant. She's right. Well, we do not know. We have to verify that. Whether we verify that ourselves with a bullet to the head of that fucker. I, I just to the dozens of dead bodies. Got it. We have to verify this. Yeah. I just go around and I check all the bodies. Is he here? Uh, no, he's not. Not here. <laughs> not here. <laughs> oh yeah, there he is. There. Okay. Um, what do we see if we look around? What are the options to get in the base? Like, is um, it just one big compound. Or so is... yeah, it's just just one central thing. Like one. I think. Central... I think the better. The door. I think the better question is: Is the door opened normally, or is it like torn open? It's sealed. So it's sealed. while you're are there, like, oh, sorry. sorry, are there like scratch marks on the walls, or like, are there any? Is there any evidence of something that something went over it? So, so well, I should mention that this isn't like a security, like a perimeter wall. This is like the front door into the base. Mm -hmm. um, but so while you're heading over to check out the door. Uh, um, Cassidy notices that there is a ventilation hatch on the side of the building and it has been busted open and claw marks are present around it and she comments on it. So. Got some claw marks over here. Hmm. Looks like a vent. How long Looks have like... we been dead? What do you reckon, Cooper? Uh, fresh. Yeah, considering that the woman came, uh, the other soldier came screaming, running at us. Yeah, there is something going on. And we're just in time for the party. I think whatever kills them is still here. I think whatever killed them went inside. Which is awfully nice of it. Can LT. Can we fit through the air shot? Okay, so um, here's the thing. So you have three options on how to get inside. The first one is you can hack into the terminal, which is a ComTech roll. You can cut through the door with a cutting torch, which is a heavy machinery roll. Or you can have somebody crawl through the shaft to get to the other side of the door and see if they can open it from within. Oh, fuck that. What kind of a roll is that? Um... <laughs> I admittedly Survive. didn't know what, Yeah, I mean, I guess, well, it would be... Stamina? Stamina. Like yeah, okay, I guess stamina. I guess stamina, if you want. Yeah. Alright, LT, I can get in there and open the door, what do you say? I'll make it quiet and quick. Uh, that's a negative. We're gonna try to act this door open. I'm not gonna just send one of you in there with something roaming around, going through the same way. That Silent and deadly is my that, specialty. Um, Gonna have the sergeant here open up the door. McKee, you're up. Yes, sir. Uh... See if you can get us in quietly and undetected, preferably. 
<laughs> Should've let me crawl through the vent. So oh, so oh, oh well, hold on. Um, oh shit, I forgot, I forgot to uh, mention something. So wait, was that a comm tech roll? Yeah. Um, it was, hold on, did I write that it was... No, it's just a normal comm tech roll, so... If it's hacking, it's contact, right? Yeah. Well, I know it's, I know it's contact, but I just I can't remember yeah. if well, like if there were any special notes to it because I put a modifier on it. Uh, okay. It's for it's just minus one, but because I forgot to mention that, I'll just give Chelsea a pass. So. Oh, okay. So. Um, all right. Oh, panic <laughs> roll. Okay. Oh uh, well. So a panic. So you six. Yeah. That is okay so we succeed on yeah so she so chelsea was basically just kind of worried that she was going to fuck it up um but she didn't so i was like oh thank god kind of nervous of something coming at me yeah like you know so your fear is like something you i mean wait arms are heavy yeah so the door slowly begins opening it jams about midway through but it is wide enough for everybody to kind of scooch in so they're like squeeze in. Look uh, at that! Have to go single file anyway. Yeah, we're gonna go in CQB like this. Wouldn't it be better to attack from two directions? I can go in through the oh, vent, you through no, the no, door. No. We're gonna we're gonna make a nice stack and we're gonna cut this. Cut what? Oh no! I mean like um, like pieing the corner, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we're gonna stack up on the door and then just go in. Uh, and I really need to pee, so I'll be back in a minute. Alright. So, um, alright, I guess we'll just wait here for just a second. So on a side note, uh, how am I doing with this? Everything's going good. Alright. Mm -hmm. no, no $500 a lot of money? Um, to put it in perspective, your weapons are worth way more. Okay, but so don't. But obviously, don't you, know, that, you can't... Wait, did you think you were going to sell it? Yeah, I'll probably steal one of my buddy's guns when they die. <laughs> okay, but yeah, the... Oh shit, I don't have the notes on um, how much the heavy pulse... I think the heavy pulse rough is like $3,000 or something, but... Okay, so uh, my eyes are more of on our guns. Yeah, so you'd rather just sell your own weapons, but... Unfortunately, the uh, Canadian Colonial Armed Forces probably won't let you get away with that, so... Uh, that's the black market. I, we got ways of smuggling stuff in. Right. Let's just say I've been to jail once or twice. Yeah. Maybe a dead body is going to have a heavy pulse rifle in it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you uh, if you get away with it, you can make some money. If you don't, then back to jail with you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put that in there. Back again. Okay. All right. So, uh, getting back into the uh, the base. So, uh, so as Task Force Reaper advances into the base, they hear movement in the air duct above them. McKee checks her motion tracker, and for a brief moment, their trackers detect or their tracker detects motion above them. But almost as soon as they activate the trackers, the blip vanishes, as does the motion sounds above them. Hmm. So basically, you heard something loud rumbling around in the vents, but as soon as you pulled out the tracker, it stopped. Okay. 
Interesting. So, uh, I just make sure a few of us are keeping eyes trained on where that was approximately. And we uh, continue forward. You don't want to clear the vent, LT? Well, there's no way we can quietly do that. You stay here, I go around the other side. How do you want to clear it? You stay here, I'll go through the other side. I mean, outside. There's worse ideas. We saw the claw marks. I mean, it can't be that big of an animal. Go in there with the combat knife and slice it up. Took out, still took out a good bunch of soldiers, so... Maybe. <laughs> we are not alone here. Yeah, All I don't right. think anyone should act alone now. Denting the vent? Like, can we see little marks in the vent now? Or uh, noise? What do you mean, like, little sort of dents in it from whatever? Yeah, like something heavy is in there and it's like pushing down the metal a little bit. Uh, no, you can't. There's, it looks like perfectly flat, so. Okay. Do we know where the sound stopped? Like, can, can we. So it was directly point? above you, but then it's kind of like, um, about, say,. 10, 15 feet to the left of you, because you're kind of like standing in this hallway with a left and right uh, path. Um, and it was going, it was traveling left. And so you pull up the tracker, and then by this point, whatever, whatever might have been up there stopped about 10 feet away. And so you can't really see or hear anything, and the motion tracker is not detecting anything. Alright, I'll just quietly keep moving forward for now. Okay. So we're still in a stack, so it means that uh, we got someone always watching our six. So, uh, so, who, the so who's covering your six? I would like uh, to. We got the. Uh, we got. Hold on, we got Adams and McKee in the rear. Alright, so. Okay, so. I think, I think this is bad. This is a good. Uh, okay, uh, we got Cassidy up front. It's gonna be hard for Adams to shoot through people with this heavy pulse rifle. So in the rear makes sense for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, usually when you do this, you're like some people are like crouching more than others. But oh, you're talking about like uh, Heather just kind of uh, crouching to snipe, and then everybody just shooting over. Well, it's yeah, kind of like a stack, but okay. yeah, sure. Okay. Keep Adam Adam in the back. All right. So, you just kind of you're kind of oh sorry. I'm keeping my eyes open, making sure nothing's coming. Right, you know I mean, are you looking behind you to the left, right, up? Well, I've got Adams on my six. I don't need to keep an eye on behind me. I'm keeping my full gaze out in front in a ninety uh, or okay. one eighty degree. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um. So. For a little That's while, you're just kind of proceeding through the base, and you reach the command room. The door is open, so you don't need to cut or hack through it. Um, and it is up to you what you want to do. So, if you want to um, take a look around, see what you can find. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, can, you, you can make observation rolls if you want. Uh, well... Yeah. When we yeah, when we get to the door, I'll just hold up a fist and I'll step inside, just one step, and I'll look around, make sure no nothing's coming. Right. So you're looking around, and there are, there's nothing there. No UPP. Uh, no. There there's absolutely nothing living in the room. Okay. Uh, I just hold up a hand in motion for them to come. Okay. So the squad moves in and. The room is quite large, so I mean, think of it kind of like the operations in Hadley's Hope, um, and um, kind of like outside, there are some dead bodies scattered around. And lock all... it down. So. Well, definitely when Adam's watching our six, don't stray from the group, but definitely um, 
keep an eye on the exit. Will do. Uh, yeah, McKee, see if you can uh, talk to any terminals here. I go look for other exits. Uh, can I pull anything up? So who's saying that, McKee? Which part? Um, were you the one saying that you're looking for exits? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, because I'm just kind of learning voices here. Including vents and other non-standard points of exit. Alright, so... Uh, well, How you're... large is this room exactly? Like... Well, like I said, just kind of think of it about the same size as uh, Operations and Hadley's Hope. So large, but you can still see across it. Yeah, like, oh, okay. you know, like you don't have to shout all the way to everybody, but okay. uh, like you, you, you're definitely in earshot, and there's plenty of room to kind of move around and check things out. All right. So, uh, does anybody want to? I mean, I know McKee is just kind of searching around for alternative routes, or like no, that's Cassidy. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, like I said, I'm getting so confused. So Cassidy's kind of taking a look around. Uh, the PCs notice an active but locked terminal with um, a blinking screen. So uh, you have the option of making, because it looks to be locked, and you have the option of making a ComTech roll to unlock it. So no other exits? or uh, There are no other exits, just one way into the room. No there's, just the, there's just the door that you came through. No big vents? Uh, there are no vents in the side of the walls. Or, ceiling? Floor? Anything? Uh, there is an, There are some vents in the ceiling, open hatches, but there does not appear to be anything in them. There's nothing like coming, to, like dripping out of them. You can't really see mm -hmm. anything out of them. Are they big enough for large creatures to move through or no? Or like a human-sized person? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're maintenance vents, so, you know, like if there was something happening in there... Uh, like something jammed, then the UPP guys would send a tech in there to fix it. Well, I don't think we're going to need those. Should I seal these up? Uh, you cannot. Because they're they're too high above you. And you don't know where the access point is to get into them. <clears throat> so what did the terminal give us again? So, well, the terminal, you have to unlock it. It's locked. Yeah, All right. For that. So this Let's is see. going to be... I'll make this an opposed roll. The terminal has seven, so... Uh, how would I go about doing or like rolling for the terminal? You just uh, roll seven for the terminal. And then, yeah. Okay. Well, how do I? Um, Forward slash R seventy six. Uh, so slash R and then seventy six. Uh, slash R space seventy six. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, the door didn't get any successes. Oh. And neither did you. But you can push. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna push it. All right. I'm roll everything again. And if that's squeaking, that's my dog playing with a toy, if you can hear that, so. Um, Alright, so did you push? Okay, so. Oh, fuck's sake. So, uh, yeah, so your stress increased by one, and you have to make a pa- oh, oh, shit! Oh, shit. Okay, <laughs> let's, ch let's check the, uh, the Wheel of Misfortune, also known as the Panic Table. Okay, so. Uh, what page was that shit again? I don't remember the page, but... It's the, it's the drop item panic. Yeah. Oh, you drop an item? Um, okay, so let me look in your... Yeah, you drop an item and your stress goes up by one. Okay, so dial up your stress. So I could have sworn I made notes on the, um, like the panic table. I think, I don't think I did. Uh, but if that's what it is, then that's what it is. So let me look. So Chelsea did that, and, um... Oh my god, damn it. Um, so, Aaron Chelsea. Okay, so you just kind of jump back for a sec and uh, you drop your motion tracker on the floor. I look at him and I look at Mickey immediately and I say, pick up your gear. Calm down. Right. I'm going to go and sit in the corner for 10 minutes and calm down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, you're just like in a fetal position, just like freaking out. Okay, so, um, does anybody want to make any kind of observations? Oh, um, so I have this banter ability. Yeah. Can I use that now? Yeah, uh, there's nothing dangerous going on in the room. There's nothing else, just you guys. So if you want to, um, 
kind of calm down uh, Chelsea. Okay. Then. Yeah, so, well, what that does is it allows my entire team to remove oh. two levels of stress instead of one. Oh. On a, but when you, you know, do the between fights thing. Okay, so. Well, um, sounds like a good time. Yeah, so you can, like, I don't know what everybody else's uh, stress. Oh, wait, I can look. <laughs> So, uh, two, two, two. Okay, so, so everyone here is Canadian, right? Yeah. <laughs> Except me. Yeah, because you're a USCM like, right. uh, transfer. So I'll just make some jokes about Canada. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and I guess, yeah, just it works and everybody is able to kind of, it lightens the mood. And so... Two levels gone, then? Yeah. Uh, anybody <sighs> who has uh, stress, dial it down two levels. Nice. All right, Ew, I want to make an observation fancy. roll for uh, just the room, I guess. Okay, so what's your observation skill? Four total. Okay, so you can um, make, a, uh, make a roll for observation if you want. All right. Two oh, success. Damn, I get some okay, so... Um, then you notice something kind of alarming on a table. You see a suitcase with a nuclear hazard symbol and a stapled stack of documents on top of it. Upon closer inspection, this is an unarmed nuclear warhead, and the documents are intelligence documents. The documents uh, are in Russian, and because you do not speak, read, or understand Russian, uh, you don't know what exactly they say. That said, both the suitcase nuke and the documents are of extraordinary value to high ca high command if you bring them back to the Castaneda. Alright. Uh, let's see. Who can... Uh... It's probably quite heavy. You might need a yeah, heavy I'll say that, I'll I'll say that um, because it's just like a kind of a made-up item, I'll say, because nukes are kind of heavy, let's say it's a weight of two, so... Just take the document. Oh. Well, definitely. Like, I pocket the documents myself, but, um, like, we're not going to put everything on one person. Yeah. So, uh, not a smart thing to do. So, uh, uh so who's, who's, uh, who's a brawny? Kind of Adams. Savvy. He's very strong. Yeah, so let me, uh, let me check, see who's strong. Adams? Yeah. I, he's got <laughs> All right. five in strength and two extra in stamina. All oh. right. Adams, secure that briefcase. All right. Hi, Lieutenant. <laughs> All right, so, well, you heard the lieutenant's orders, Cassidy. Uh, Adams is taking the uh, the case. Um, so then, at, anyone, so after uh, you, if anyone moves that, I'm just going to point out the to check to make sure that's actually unarmed. Oh yeah, that's a good. Uh... All right, yeah, I'll give it a check up. Did I get my five minutes of sitting in the corner? Yeah, yeah, it's been enough. It's been enough time. Uh, the nuke is unarmed, so, or at least that you can tell it's unarmed. Cool. Yeah, um, that's fine. At least, because, I mean, there's no, like, countdown timer, the tip isn't glowing, any shit like that, so, to the best of your knowledge, it is unarmed. Looks unarmed to me. So, while continuing to look around in the base, you make a discovery with some good news and bad news. General Severov is present. The good news ends there. The bad news is that somebody, or rather something, killed him before you arrived, and rather b brutally at that. He's been ripped to shreds, and there's a bloody hole in the side of his face, as if somebody used a massive hole puncher on the side of his head. Too wide to have been a bullet, it must have been something else. Something well, beat the... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Something beat the squad to their objective, but given the gore presence, probably not particularly friendly. Well, time to go home. <laughs> so. I agree. I'm right, so... Um, yeah, someone search the uh, search the body real quick. Yeah, I'll do that. Back up and get out of here. Search through that big hole on his face. <laughs> yeah, dig around for chunks of brain or something. I want to find out if he's got any dog Yeah, there. yeah. Cooper, check out the wounds. Uh, whoever else is kind of good with observing, uh, check his person for anything of interest. Adams, keep your eyes on. Uh, on the ceiling there, and whoever is not doing anything else, uh, keep an eye on the vents. Alright. Uh, so, that includes me. 
So like, your search. Denial. So you said your uh, uh, search. Adams, did you mean to put that into general chat? Yeah, but I mean it's out of character, so <laughs> it's not like I said <laughs> that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Just steal the nuke. Okay, so uh, Heather is observing uh, the body. Or what are you looking yeah. for? Uh, uh, his pockets and shit. I yeah. Guess, right? Okay, so you're searching his pockets and you find. Hard on the backseat uh, thing, by the way. Um, well, you, you search his body and you find an ID card, like a security card with his photo on it. So it's sufficient proof that he is dead. Or, like, well, you, yeah. have, you have evidence that, you know, he's. <clears throat> that you got him. Or at least, so everybody thinks you got him, um, because you know you, it's not like he would have just given you his key card. Is is it like a solid piece of plastic, or is it one of those ones that you like slide the ID into? Um, kind of a little bit of both, sort of. Well, because is, is there like a pocket in the ID? Like, was it hung around his neck? Was it clipped to him? Um, it was in uh, his uniforms, one of his front pockets on his chest. So it's just like a credit card, basically. Yeah, it's pretty much like an ID credit card. All right. Okay. So. Yeah. So. Um, and just to be clear, his blood is red, not white, correct? Yes, he's a human. <laughs> okay, just had to be sure. Mission yeah, uh, accomplished. Yep, so mission accomplished. Um, it, so if you're, uh, are you guys ready to head back to the wildfire? Yeah. It's not so little nice. All right. All right, people, keep your eyes peeled. Don't forget to stay in the stack. Keep an eye on your six, your four, your, your, um, your zones. So let's this... Just, let's just exfil uh, quick, apply it, and then we got the job. Good. Well done. So this nuke is pretty heavy, right? Yeah, it's a weight of two, so... All right, I'll strap it to Adam's back. And I say, that's what you get for being stronger. <laughs> So, nice smile. All right. Yeah, it's, it comes from all that time lifting weights in prison. Maybe later. All right. So, on your way out of the command room while we'll walking through the door you came through, Cooper is suddenly yanked up into the air by a pair of long, black, almost skeletal arms. All PCs must make a panic roll. Or Jesus hopefully the Christ. timing is... What did I do? <laughs> You were walking under a vent, and then suddenly something just grabbed you and pulled you up into it. Oh, fuck. So, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have the panic table open, so you guys kind of got to look at it. Um, let's see, I'll work so, through it. Yeah, next, next. Adams has a five, which is, he keeps it together, barely. Yeah, Same so, for McKee. Yeah, so basically uh, all keep together, so that was kind of a... They're very yeah. cool about this situation. Yeah, so. <laughs> How do you roll a panic? Well, it doesn't matter, because if, no, if, you if you guys don't have any stress, then... Under your name, there's a roll button, and one of them says yeah. panic. But yeah, you're still fine as well. Right. God damn. So, so, yeah, that was kind of... Uh, that's definitely something I needed to tweak. Do we increase days. stress with one? Um... Yeah, it seems about right. I mean, it's not like yeah. you're gonna go, oh ho hum, something just grabbed. Jeez, thanks, over. Lieutenant. Um, so Cooper is pulled up into an open ceiling vent and into like up into the vents, and she finds, or yeah, well he, my bad, I was thinking of, you know, like reckless, but so Trent finds himself face to face with a horrific monster black in color its most prominent features include a long smooth domed head with no eyes and a menacing looking maw and sharp claws still drenched in blood the creature looks straight at him stro slowly opening its mouth and unexpectedly launching forth an inner mouth um so and then just from the book wait like, where did where did that fucker yeah. come from is that a second one Vent. No, it was, um, well, I mean, you don't know how, uh, if it's the only one, but basically it was just chilling up in, up in the ceiling vent. Oh, okay, and it was, so that happens to Cooper up there. Yeah, so Cooper is grabbed, and he's pulled up into the vent, because you didn't track it on the radar, and it was, like, lurking in this ambush position. But I could shoot, like, the vent ahead of where we thought Cooper was, right? Uh, no, you can't, mainly because the risk of accidentally hitting it. Because you don't know how far Cooper is into the vent or where where the, right. the creature right. is because, you know, there's the risk. If you fire up into the vent, you could hit Cooper and kill him. 
Can I hit them with my shotgun? Well, here's the thing. So you have to, um, like you, um, you have to make an opposed mobility or stamina roll. I guess your choice. I mean, again, I'm kind of new to this, so I'm just trying to. I'm gonna roll for mobility. Okay, so, um, if you, all right, so do a mobility roll. Um, oh, damn. Yes. All right, so you dodge its attack. And, like, you kind of, like, dive to the side as it shoots its mouth out. So, uh, if you have a weapon drawn, you have the opportunity to attack it. So, you have a shotgun. Did you have your shotgun drawn? Yes, all the time. I think we all did. Oh, yeah. I think we all had our okay, weapons. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. would have fucking reamed your ass if you had <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Okay, so, um, roll for... Uh, range combat because I mean in terms of like uh, initiative the creature attack you first and it and it missed okay so you fire at it with your shotgun and let me just check the shotgun um, the shotgun does it doubles their armor unfortunately. yeah it doubles your armor well actually no wait you oh you get a bonus of two did you roll for the bonus of two uh, no okay so tell you what um you can roll it again if you want, um, or you can just stick with the success that you have. Because I forgot to mention that the shotgun has a bonus of two to your roll. And I think having a, uh, I think having a, um, uh, what should we call it? So it's modifier plus two. Must modifier plus two and. Uh, you just type in two though. Don't do plus yeah, two. Know. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna stick to the success. Okay. So what? Yeah. All right. So. You dramatically pump and fire the shotgun, and the armor is doubled. So, hiss, hiss. Yeah, so you basically, uh, you do, I mean, rounding up to two damage. So let me check the, our big black friend's uh, armor. Uh, where is he? It doubled the alien's armor because it doesn't... Yeah, it doubled, yeah, it doubled the alien's armor because the... All right. Right, so here he is. Um, so his armor was eight, and so what? What I roll for armor? I guess. Yeah, you roll with armor. Right? Okay, so. Um, all right, so. Shotgun roll. has a base damage of three. Yeah, so well, the shotgun it did two damage because the armor halved, and that I mean normally it would be one point five oh, no, damage, you, you, but um, you round up. Does, you, you have to roll double the armor. 16. Oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. Alright, 16 the shotgun, DC. The shotgun still has its base, its base damage of 3, but you rolled double armor. Yeah, so... Hey, um, he's sitting pretty yet. Yeah, uh, four successes on the alien's part, so you basically, like, scratched, scratched it. Um, that said, it didn't really take too kindly to this, and it retreats. Uh, just goes, like, rapidly scurrying off into the vents. Can I crawl out of down? The... Yeah, you can you can jump down out of the hole because you survived. Fucking hell. <laughs> Cooper out. Yeah. Alright, so that is act one. Uh so I mean I guess if we're running with story points, uh, let me check your agendas. Um so and I should mention that I was set up. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I, I just, like, <laughs> when, when I wrote the agendas, so that was, uh, Rico? Yeah, it's not even for my agenda, it just randomly grabs me. Yeah, well, no, I mean, because, panic. because nobody... So we all get that one. Uh, what now? I think you get, don't you get experience points for getting... No, it's not experience points in cinematics, it's no. story points. Uh, experience, you only get those on, uh... Campaign. Yeah, you get story points and cinematics and story points are freebies for automatic success so out of sympathy for, set up. yeah out of sympathy for Rico um, you get you get a story can I point tell him? what mm -hmm. can I kind of tell him what mine was or are you on um, under wraps yeah we'll have it in wraps okay so um, but, what do you mean to set up well <laughs> I all, just could never have done yeah 
it was kind of like it's kind of like those games where you have an objective, and then you find that that yeah, it's like it just tells you plot twist. Yeah, objective. I don't. I don't even know what my agenda is. What? You it's your it's where your character sheet was. Yeah. It, well, no. Okay. So my it's personal not, agenda is blank. Oh, uh, it's not on your character sheet. Go to the You've library and then it's a handout. Oh, I see. Okay. So um, it'll be your name number one, and then you click on that. Hand Handouts just work way easier because you can just slip yeah, I see it now. for act uh, shit. Yeah, so Duncan gets a story point. Um, Chelsea gets a story point. Yay. Uh, because, I, because nobody... I do feel like mine's a little mine's a little like unaccomplishable because I oh, literally <laughs> I like literally can't disobey, you know? Well, I mean you can. Uh, yeah. but like like after this is done look, look at my fucking my agenda for act one and tell me it's still yeah I, i'm really sorry about that, that. i just kind of wrote the agenda since <laughs> like it's story fine. Days. I love it. okay uh, <laughs> do, I, do i get a story point then? yeah because nobody um yeah, well nobody i mean i won't say it but um i i do keep tabs on what you've been doing and you know you you get a story point for that um so, and then I guess out of fairness, I'll give uh, Rico and Cassidy story points. All right. So, I mean, because I know, I know some of the agendas are, like, kind of unaccomplishable. Um, yeah. What? Is this going to be a god or something? Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, technically, I could have, but it would not have made much of a difference. Yeah, so, um, but we'll, well, we can discuss all that after the game, so. Um, so... Shortly after, uh, Cooper almost, you know, gets a whole punch in her face, but, or his face, I mean, because, you know, Trent Cooper, um, Walker the pilot radios in, and he mentions that, um, hold on a sec, uh, that the engine took some damage. It was sabotage. Our plane? Yeah, your dropship, the Wildfire's engine, was sabotaged by somebody. Is Are we the only people that are on it? And the pilot, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> then it must why be the pilot. Pilot around. Right. So. Um, but why would he sabotage his own ship? It might not, it wasn't necessarily. Could have been pilot. sabotaged before yeah. and then just failed when we. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily the pilot that did it. Mm -hmm. Um, but so, anyway, um, one thing is certain, well, also, um, on top of that, there's a storm inbound, and Wildfire cannot risk taking off and flying until the storm passes. Not that it matters, because it can't fly right now, but, um, either way, your ride is out of commission, and you're stranded in enemy territory with an alien with a preference for ambush and swift assault. Um... You have two options. You can either find somewhere secure to hide and wait out the storm, or you can go on the offensive and destroy the alien. So Do we have an APC? No, because you landed on foot. Like, you landed on foot, and you walked, like, you marched over to the base. Well, so basically uh, the equivalent of a Black Hawk. Exactly, like a Black Hawk insertion, so... Lieutenant, I'd like to suggest we recon back to the operations center and see if we can interrogate the computer. Maybe we yeah, should get the hell out of here, though. It's a hunting ground. Oh, aren't we already in the op center? What was it again? You walked out of the op center after oh, right. finding out that Severov was dead, and you got the nuke. So, so. We should find shelter. So. What did you see up there? Cooper. Yeah, we should find more information if there's any other ride out of here. How does the... So, the dropship can't fly at all? Uh, not for the time being, because somebody sabotaged its engine, and Walker has to fix it. Okay, and uh... Even then, uh, there's a storm that's just about to close in, and it doesn't matter because uh, the dropship wouldn't be able to take off anyway, so you're basically just stuck there. Um, okay. And... Like I said, you have two options. You can either uh, try try and hide somewhere, or you can go on the offensive and kill the alien. Is there a like uh, a elevated 
rock formation or something around that I could climb on top? There is not. Okay. Because the terrain uh, is like. It's are we very... outside again, or? No, you're still in the base. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I mean, if you want. Uh, Cooper, you can kind of fill the squad in on what you saw because you were the only one who saw the alien. Um, and yeah. knowledge is power, so. Yeah, what the fuck was that? Because they saw that something grabbed you, but they didn't see what it was. It's huge, and it has a really long, smooth head with mouths within its mouth. What is it? Dangerous creature. <laughs> Sounds Lethal. like UPP has been messing with something too big for them, as usual. I think we can use a banter moment now. Um, can we? Right? Can? I don't know. Well, I mean, I, 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 I hold on. Isn't banter like a once per act or thing? Uh. It just has between fights you can use it. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, if your stress isn't too high... Um, yeah, okay. I would kind of recommend you save it. Um, it's up yeah, It's up to you, high. but, I mean, I'm just saying that I would save it. But, um, Often are we able to use our signature item? That might be the key. Um, I mean... Possibly, I'd have to double check your signature items. Truth be told, but <laughs> um, but anyway, so whenever, you can, why not? So you can you have a couple of options on what you can do. I mean, I can either give you some, or you can discuss <clears throat> plans as a group. <clears throat> like whether, <throat> like for oh, oh, just just for a sec. Um, but so but when I say options, I'm not talking about either fight or flee. I mean, like, if you choose to fight, then here are some ideas that you can do. So, you should kind of come to a consensus about what main plan you're going to take, and then what you're going to do to get All right. success. Well, I'll well my suggestion. first I'm going to contact the, the pilot, what's his name, Walker? Yeah, Matt Walker. Yeah, tell him to start making repairs. Right. Walker, can you give me an estimate of repair time, please? Uh, ETA, one hour. Uh, but I, right. uh, but be advised, I don't know how long the storm will last because it was not on the mission briefing. It was a totally unexpected variable that command wasn't able to predict. So the the, repair, wear... the dropship will be operational within the hour, but it won't it won't be airborne within the hour. Be aware, we have a big mean hostile in the area. Copy that, but be aware. Noted, but you are on your own in terms of dealing with it. Yeah, just tell him to keep his head low. If he sees anything move, hide in the ship. I like and, it. And keep the <laughs> and keep the plank up. And do what now? The uh, ramp. Keep the ramp up. <laughs> All right. So, uh, copy that. Hold I it. will. I will hold down the fort until it is safe to pick you up. Out. Yeah. Well, as long as you. Well, one thing to note, though, well, that he, he gets his ass in there and lays low as soon as he uh, sees anything on his NVGs. Yeah, well, he, I mean, like I said, he um, acknowledged what you said, and then he left the radio, so. All right. Uh, Lieutenant, how's he going to fix the plan? Watch his back, and, you know, he's probably going to be outside the ship while he does that. Uh, well, no, it was, it was uh, like an internal module. Oh, okay. So, I thought it was like a physical I, engine. Yeah, so I mean, he basically just closes the ramp, and then he's just inside the dropship. He's safe from the storm, uh, and you know, he's just gonna fix it inside, so. Phew. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, that means we have to ride out this storm, and see if we can find anything that can help us here, and see if we can uh, take out whatever the fuck it is that's hunting. I think our best bet is to find a secure location, one in, one out, drop to us. Exactly. So we should get back to that control room, watch the vents, 
the security area. See if we can uh, get some information from the terminal. Let's check the map. See if there's somewhere that might be more secure. I'd be more safe. I'd be more secure in a closet than in the control room. Well, let's see if we can get any info. All right. So, are you saying you're heading back to the control room? Yeah, I think that's the idea. <clears throat> All right. So, making sure to keep your weapons aimed at the vent as you're heading back into the command room. Uh, you head over to the main computer console, but it is uh, out of commission. The lights are off, so there's no way you can access it. Is it damaged, or does it just not have power? It's It doesn't have power. The base is on emergency power, and only critical functions are... Uh, calming juice. Uh. <laughs> Corporal, that's heroin. Knock it off. <laughs> so, um, but at any rate, uh, basically the only terminal that's on is the one that uh, was locked that you failed to open, so. Alright. Uh, so, did we see lights in other parts of the base, or no? It's on dim emergency lighting. So. So, so theoretically this console should still have power, but it doesn't. Well, all power is being diverted to critical functions. In this case, um, like lighting, uh, like temperature kind of control, I guess, if that would count. Doors. Who's the, who's the computer nerd here? That would be uh, Chelsea McKee. Okay. Apparently not based on the rules. <laughs> uh, McKee, do you think you can reroute all power to just the command center? We don't need the rest of the base. I don't know. Let's have a look, shall we? What now? Go for it, Lieutenant. Ah. Uh, I mean, Sergeant. Fuck. Uh, uh, he's... Apparently not. Yeah. So... I mean, instead of, like, something happening, you're just saying, it's like, no, this is just not something I can do. So. Okay. So, while you're in the uh, command room, uh, Cassidy notices capsules built into the wall, and upon closer inspection, she discovers that two of them contain working Joe androids. Holy shit, she says. It's true. The UPP did buy them as combat androids. With that in mind, that you suddenly get the idea of activating the Working Joes to enlist them in assisting you against the creature lurking in the base. So, Lieutenant, we've got Milk Boys. Milk Boys. Uh, so, <laughs> if you want to activate them, uh, you are going to make an opposed contact roll. Okay, so there is so there's power to these cradles that they're in then. Well, they're like these capsules, and you think that you can, like, activate them just long enough to get the working Joes out and operational. Because they're essentially in, like, stasis, kind of. I don't know about you guys, but these things give me the willies. Yeah, fuck Andrew. Damn right. All right so you're Good old-fashioned gun power. All right, so you're not going to activate the working Joes? We don't even know if these things will obey us. Chances yeah. Are pretty well, slim. well, I mean, like I probably said, probably reprogram them to kill us. Yeah. Well, if you successfully hack them, then you get them on your side, unless you attack them. They are. Uh, this is, by the way, um, if you're just a visual, people would kind of the capsules they come in. Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, Mc McKay, do you think you can get in his brain? I want to say yes, but you know, it doesn't currently look like so, it. So, <laughs> I should mention that this is not going to be easy, but it would be of a huge benefit if you succeed. It's an okay, opposed roll with a minus two modifier because it's very encrypted. Anyway. Hold on, I'll be right back, guys. Okay. okay. Or call McGee. Um, yeah, and then... So, that was... Uh, <laughs> A roll to hack him? Yeah, minus two. Okay, so I... I don't um, a single success yet. So, are you able to push those opposed rules in the game? 
Uh, only the attacker could have pushed, so I could if I, I as as only the the initiator could push, so I could. Yeah, well, if you want Still to, uh, all I can say is uh, the next detail. If you don't succeed, you're going to really wish you wanted. To. Oh no. Well, can't we help him? Can we be like, hey, you're fucking hitting the wrong button there. Oh! Oh, he did it! Okay. It's an opposed roll, it doesn't mean I've done it. Yeah, okay. Because uh, here's the thing is that it, I was going to say, a failed roll brings them online but makes you hostile towards them. Oh my god. So you got so lucky, dude. But, anyways, okay. okay. So the capsules open and then they step out in perfect sync. And then they turn to you like, may I be of assistance? So. Protect me. <laughs> no, no, no. So, they are unarmed. There is, a, there is a, okay, can I speak to them right now? Yes. Okay. Joes, there is a hostile life form in this base. Um, under your prime directives, you are ordered to protect sentient life. I order you to watch over us. And uh, assist Lieutenant us in any Lizar way. Combat Joes, they have no prime directives. What? If these were the combat, if these were the Joes that were bought on the black market, they have no prime directives for uh, protection of human life. All the right. Was, the reason they were sold in the first place is because they hadn't had the directives imposed. Well, they were bought as combat androids, so they, you know, answer whoever is the highest in command, which would be Lieutenant Rico. All right. Um, so basically, what he says goes. They are unarmed, but you can give them weapons. So other, if I mean, if you don't give them a gun, then they attack Just the melee. Strap a nuke to one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a nuke, though. Keep that in mind. All right, Joe's. You are tasked with the protection of this unit. You will not leave this unit side unless ordered otherwise by me, lieutenant of this unit. There is a hostile life form that intends to to kill us. There is another life form uh, under my command back at a shuttle. He is also to be protected. And the other life forms you have to restrain and otherwise kill if told so. Do you understand? You always know a working Joe. Oh, that's good enough for me. All right, sir. Man. Sir, what's this restrain stuff? Shouldn't it be KOS? Well, I mean, computer is not talking to us. Could be some good information in there. We can always make these guys snap their necks. Okay, so we don't want them to just go killing the first thing they see. Unless, of course, it is the creature. You understand, Joe's. Acknowledged. There we go. You'll recognize this creature by... I uh, basically describe it as Cooper described it to us. I hope their imagination <laughs> yeah. is big enough to... You're <laughs> assuming they have an imagination. Do they, actually, do they have any info about this creature? Uh, yes. They do not because they have been uh, inactive this whole time. So, yeah, they're basically. So, Joe's, uh, can you give us some information about the compound we're in? Um, hold on, I'm just kind of thinking it over because again, I, I I didn't have uh, blueprints or anything ready uh, because right. I kind of considered this a test run. But um, so they explain, and I won't do the voice for it this time. That uh, the base is kind of a light surveillance outpost. The general was visiting uh, on an ex inspection and as a light outpost it contains um, like uh, an armory communications uh, and you know just some kind of basic like basic living quarters for the crew or like the uh, garrison that kind of thing so so do you want to check out any of the rooms Armory. Okay. Yep. So. Exactly. Uh, Joe's watch over us, guide us to the armory. Acknowledged. Please follow me. So, the Joe's uh, guide. Hold on, let me flip back the page. Um, so the Joe's. Make sure Adams um, is like a 
well, yeah, Adams, of course, he can swivel around and, like, rip these guys to shreds with the uh, AR. <laughs> okay. If needed. Yeah. So, uh, knowing that the uh, creature has a fondness for lurking in the vents, you also get the idea of checking the armory if there's anything in, like, specialty gear that could help them flush it out of its element and down into yours. Um, so you go down to the armory, just kind of taking it slow and easy, even though the Joes are just kind of casually walking along. The armory, yeah, you have all these Marines, like... That's exactly like, how they do it. Yeah, they're just, like, kind of yeah, aiming, can, looking all over... imagine Yeah, aiming all over the place, and then they're just kind of casually walking down the hall. If you investigate, oh God, so the armory uh, has been stripped almost completely bare, lacking rifles or handguns of any kind. However, two flamethrowers are present with three lo reloads between them. So you have the option of taking the flamethrowers either in addition to or to replace your current weapons. And, uh, or, or you could, I mean, it would be a bad idea, but you could, or possibly, but you could, if you wanted, give them to the working Joes. Uh, or alternatively like you could maybe like give a gun one of your guns to a working joe oh yeah like hell okay uh, okay um question i've got a 314 motion tracker we're a special ops unit would that be a 324 motion tracker the uh attachable one oh that's the 316 but, um uh i actually did not think of that um I'm sorry. Like, like I said, I'm just kind of inexperienced, so... Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, so... You just discovered a bug. Sorry, three, yeah, three, the 316 or 320. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, well, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so it'll be a 316, then. In that case, if it's a 316, I'm taking a flight for Alright. So... <laughs> So you. How, how many flamethrowers are there? Two. There are two flamethrowers and three reloads between them. So what you could do is you could have, uh, one person with one flamethrower and all the ammo for it, or you could have like two people with flamethrowers and then one would have, uh, like, two, uh, one thing and then the other would have two. All so. right. So who took the first one? Was the. I'll take one and I'll grab a reload. Like, right. And I'm gonna I'm gonna strap the 316 side of the incinerator instead. Okay, so like, we, like Wesker, your name changed back to normal. Yeah. Oh, was it? Oh, well, okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's McKee. Yeah. Okay, so you're so you're McKee. Yeah. Okay, so jot down the. Okay, so you got the flamethrower two reloads. Yeah. And so somebody else did somebody else take the second one and the one reload for it? I think we should. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cassidy or Cooper? I don't need that. I'll All take right. that. <laughs> Cooper? Yeah. Um, there you go. Mr. GM, man. Can I just quickly talk to you in a private room? Who, me? Or... Oh, yeah. look at that. This is not going to be good, is it? So, wait, you... oh, hold on, wait, hold on. This is the lost. part where... Someone is gonna screw everyone else over. I, I have a question, and I don't want everyone else to know what the answer is yet, just in case I get the wrong answer. So, are you asking? Wait, are you asking that to me or to somebody else? To, yeah, to the, to the game mother. Okay, so, um, yeah, you just. Do you know how to, like, private whisper? Um. You could just drop in table yeah. two real quick if you want. Okay, alright, I will look. Oh, and table two or table one? Yeah, table two will drop in there. Alright, I'll take a look in table two. Alright. <laughs> Oh. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like yeah. a chat. Alright. Yeah, no, uh, so just quickly, um, one, uh, I noticed you haven't given out Act 2 of Act 2 agendas to Oh, me. shit, yeah. I don't know if I missed, if everyone missed that. I've only just realized it because I was really. I was oh, that's, agenda. oh, that's a good point. I forgot about that. Yep. Yeah. Um, two, uh, if my agenda in it, well, uh, well what, what's my agenda in Act 2? Because that depends on what my next action is. Um, your next action, and you are McKee? Yeah. Okay, your next action will be that you're going to uh, work together with the squad to try to survive because the alien is a bigger danger than they are. That's fine. That's all. Uh, that's all I needed to know. But obviously, not knowing the second agenda it depends on whether I step. Yeah. So I, I, I gotta kill a lot of them. Go in and explain <laughs> that to everybody. <laughs> I didn't want. I didn't want to do that if that's gonna mess with things. So. Okay. Well, I mean, I appreciate yeah. you doing that. All right. I'll jump back into table one. Cool. Okay, so 
I forgot to send out Act 2 agendas, so... Welcome yeah, back, Trader. <laughs> That's what we were talking about, too, when you guys were gone. Yeah, so uh, I apologize for forgetting to send out the other agendas, because it was kind of wrapped up in the story. Um, it's okay. okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so, alright, so give Romero number two to Rico. Alright, so Rico, there's your second one, and this one you oh, can actually boy. do. Oh. If you do it properly. If. <laughs> Alright, so this is for, okay, this is Cassidy's second one. Um, McKee, um... I mean, you already—I already told you yours, but you. Um, mm, I wonder what McKee's agenda is. Yeah, here's your, here's your second one, and we will have a discussion. Well, I wanted to make sure, like, second agendas were being passed. Yeah, out. no, I had second agendas. Yeah. I just forgot to send <laughs> them over. Okay. I didn't know whether the first agenda counted as second because obviously things. Yeah, well, thank you for pointing that out because yeah. I otherwise would have like forgotten until the very end of the game. <laughs> okay, so then there's Duncan Part Two, and then Cooper, um, is. Cooper number two. Okay. Kill Cooper. Okay. Let me write that down. I didn't say kill Cooper. <laughs> what? That's not on the agenda. <laughs> kill Cooper. Why? Nay, 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 nay. All right. So everybody got their agendas? Okay. Um. Is there any use for the story points, or is it just story like... points are, um, like auto successes. So, if you do something and you need to succeed, then oh. you give a story point. Like if, uh, like if you need to hit, like attack something and hit it, then, uh, yeah. Okay. That's that's what you use a story point. Like if you don't get any successes, then you say I'll use my story point, and then you automatically succeed. Mm -hmm. So everybody has a story point, so that's kind of like a freebie. Um, okay, so uh, is so now you guys got the flamethrowers, um, and so you got flamethrowers, and you've got working joes. Uh, how much damage is for the flamethrower? The flame. Th God damn it! I forgot to mention that, um, or forgot to write that down. I think the flamethrower is. Let me go get so the, the flamethrower. Sets you on fire with an intensity of nine. Um, can you type that in the chat so I can put that in a note? Sure. All right. Um, because I took pictures of rifles and I forgot to do it for the heavy weapons. Um, all right. So. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Um, Alright, all right, thank you. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so... Damage 2, fire intensity 9. Um, so, and... If I remember correctly... Uh, aliens actually are vulnerable to fire. So... Yeah, the good thing about flamethrowers is that it does not give the alien any splash damage to you. So, yeah, yeah, damn it, I forgot to write that down to you. Like I said, I'm just... So, if you do have a flamethrower and you see an alien, go for the flamethrower. Yep. Otherwise, uh, you might find yourself without a hit. Yep. Okay, so... Because the splash <clears throat> damage, the mod the way that's modified is insane. It's like, yeah. double the damage. I don't insane. think we know anything about that yet, though. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, the, the aliens have a different armor rating against fire, depending on which stage they are. Alright. Oh, great. Well, well, usually fire is the best thing to use in those fuckers. Yeah, Second everybody's... only to nukes. <laughs> yeah. It's a nuke. Nuclear fire. <laughs> okay, so, uh, do you guys want to continue exploring, or do you just want to find somewhere to bunker down? Um, anything else of interest that the Joes could show us to? Um, like a strong room, uh, uh like an, like an in intelligence center, or, uh... Alright, so, um, you ask, so you ask one of the Joes, and, um, he explains that there are, and I'm just kind of doing it in and out of voice, but in this case, uh, he's just saying that there is 
a safe room. He doesn't know what the status of it is, and then there's like a, um, like there is actually um, a generator that could be restarted or like rebooted, which would restore the base to full power. And if that's the case, then you could, in theory, go back to the command room and reactivate the terminal, see if you can find some answers. That sounds uh, hey, like a plan. Let's Lieutenant, get generators. let's yeah, think about this for a second. This is a place fully stocked with soldiers all over the place, and they couldn't hold it up. How the fuck are we going to hold it off? Because we're, we're goddamn Canadians, plan. that's why. What are you going to do, kill it with maple syrup? <laughs> if I have to. Let's be reasonable here. We need to get out of here. So what do we do? What do we do with the storm out there? I mean, is it storming yet? Do we know that? Uh, yeah, it's it's been storming. I mean, it pretty much started like five minutes after uh, Walker told you that the um, the storm was inbound. Okay. Well, I can handle a little storm. I mean, what are we talking about here? Can we do there any windows? Do we know how bad it is? Um, you can't. See, there aren't any windows, but you can hear it sounds very, very vicious. So I mean, I don't know if your mom and dad's let you go outside when it's raining and all, guys, but my mom and dad did. Remember I mean, when the pilot said the uh, ship had been sabotaged and he had to fix it? Yes. And he would be fixing it for a few hours? Yeah, so... I would rather not... That's why, that's why we're waiting. Yeah, so basically... I would rather not leave him alone. Well, no, he, no, he's fine. He sealed up the dropship. He's working. Yeah, that'll inside. fuck it. Stop whatever that thing that just pulled Even Cooper. Even if the engine the is ceiling. fixed, we won't be able to go anywhere. Exactly. Because also, keep in mind that it is entirely possible that uh, since the creature knows that there is prey where it's, like, in its territory, it doesn't really have any need to, like, go out of the base and look for stuff. Well, that's even less reason to stay here. It knows we're here, and... Even more reason. Otherwise, we don't know there's more than one. Well, but I think we can take. We do it know there's that more have... than one. Don't know that there's not more than one. Mm. You've seen one so far. Would there only be one? Like, but you've seen one so far. That's all you know. I don't want to leave the pilot alone. I think it's a big mistake. And if you don't want to send me, I'm gonna. Have... So what do you, you want to do? Go. Set up perimeter outside. Yeah, right, we should go. Ship be repaired and precisely so you're going to head back to the dropship i don't plan for now i don't think it's a good idea lt it's going to draw more attention to the dropship than if we just left them alone how so we're fucking quiet we're sneaky but that I thing got the drop on us even if we are that. sneaky maybe we do want that it's more open terrain and nice. I can really use this heavy pulse rifle outside. I could really fucking open this thing up and rip that thing apart. I can't really do that one. I think it might be a good thing if we lured it that way. We could wait it out and give it all the hell we got. You mean in to the ship? Just, in, You're the lieutenant. in here, Cooper already got almost picked off. We go to the ship. Together, we're right there when the storm lays down and the repairs are finished. We can be sure that if the if the creek ready for it. Plus, we got two of these boys. Milk nope, boys. Got the nuke. Let's fucking go. All right. So. What is the yeah, uh, McGee? You got you got any idea if that's a variable yield nuke or what's uh what can we expect from it? Okay, so um in terms of the nuke, just kinda of flipping the page back over. Um the thing is with the nuke, so uh you suggested that you use the nuke to um and I mean I, I know this is, I'm just kinda of going off the script, so just bear with me. So you have the option of using it to wipe out the base within because if analysis teams 
investigated it, you would think they would think it's an accidental detonation from within UPP territory versus, say, an enemy state firing a missile. That said, the nuke, if returned to Allied Command, would give you enormous bonuses to include massively boosted pay and promotions galore, but using it would almost literally destroy said bonuses. Um, the documents recovered would make for suitable evidence and confirmation that the UPP had... Um, uh, UPP had plans to use it on UAAC or civilian targets, but they wouldn't be as valuable as the weapon itself. Hmm. There is no way to tell that these creatures are not already somewhere out there, if there is any more of them. So what's the yield of it? Like, what's the radius? Uh, um, we, uh... It would definitely be, uh... I mean, well... You can set the timer on it. Yeah, but um, the yield, though. Like, you can run for two hours from this thing. If it's 20 megatons, you're still going to be a big fucking sim. Yeah, the... Um, we, we shouldn't set the nuke off, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an expert on nukes and explosives. So, I mean, all I can say is that, you know, it would just be... Um, considering that it could have been used, like... Yeah, you know, if you're putting the pieces together and you think that maybe because you can't see the contingency documents, but you know somebody could like Severov could have been used in terms of his plans to attack UA territory. The nuke might have been for that reason. So he's talking about using it on, or possibly using it on, like a city or. A base or something like that. So obviously, it's going to be of sizable yield. It would, yeah, at any rate, it would completely, it would completely wipe out the base. And the oh. thing is, is that if you, um, like, you know, you can set the timer to where the timer would be like three hours or something, which would give you more than enough time to. Or, I mean, well, Lieutenant, you know, was that part of uh, Brass's commands? To the fucking compound or was it just to kill the guy it was to I kill guess. the guy we were just here for the general <laughs> stick to that situation has changed though brass and all their wisdom did not know of this creature we would encounter though what if they did if they did they expect us to deal with it to our own expertise that's why we were sent here let's nuke it from that's space it. anything <laughs> We, okay, we so keep this, oh. we keep this in the back of our minds. We got disposable uh, manpower, basically at our side right now. We so you start about using, back. so you start about using oh, the I working just, Joe's as suicide bombers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't go Alu Akbar on that shit. Yeah. So who was it suggested you doing like an orbital strike? Yeah, that just as a movie reference. Just joking. Uh, okay. <laughs> Because that's actually not, an option. I it. was not joking. We should yeah, nuke we the site could, in orbit. We, yeah, we could. <coughs> I think we definitely should. Okay, so... Um, it might be the more efficient way. Alright, so who was it that suggested that originally? I think that was me, wasn't it? Um, what character are you playing? Because, again, I'm not looking at Discord. I'm just... Cassidy. Okay, Cassidy. So... Cassidy suggests bringing the Castaneda into orbit to fire a missile or nuke at the outpost to destroy any and all traces of the alien menace. While this would guarantee the absolute that annihilation... Would suggest uh, oh, sorry, what? ...quite the aggression. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, just hear me out on this. Not, that's uh, not an option, no. Uh, well, while this would guarantee... on the UPP site will start a war. Yeah, that's the exactly. thing, though, is that... So, while this would guarantee the absolute annihilation of the alien or even aliens, if there are more than one. The dangers of doing so are twofold. The first one is Task Force Reaper, you're still on a Black Ops mission in enemy territory. The mission objective was strictly to assassinate Severov as discreetly as possible and an orbital strike from a warship is the very antithesis of discreet. Not only would this likely spark a huge war between the UA and UPP but any UPP warships in the sector could detect the Castaneda, converge on it, and destroy it leaving you without a ride home. The other danger is that a missile traveling from the distance between the Castaneda and LV-416 would have an ETA of an hour, and there's no guarantee that the storm would end within an hour, not taking into account how much would time, it, time it would take you to return to the dropship and reach minimum safe distance before the nuke hit the base. 
Can we <laughs> use the nuke to modify the weather? Like, blow a hole in... ...clouds and shit. Like, the, the nuke briefcase. Uh... You would... It, if you use the nuke... ...while you're in territory to blow away the storm, it's gonna kill you. I figured as much, but... I mean... Like, put, like, put it a few clicks from the base. Let it detonate, and then they give. No, no, let, never mind. All right, all right. All right let's, let's, let's make it. Let's, let's forget about this nuke and let's get let's the pack, fuck out. Let's pack up. Uh, get to the drop ship. Keep your eyes open and set a perimeter while repairs are being done. All right. If any creature does intend to follow us, they're gonna have to face us with all this fucking armor. I want to see him try. <coughs> we're not gonna be picked off in here. We've done our mission, and we're gonna be preparing to leave. Right. So. On your way towards the, because uh, uh, so just to confirm, you're heading out of the base. Yeah. Okay. On your way towards the front door, you hear the storm. The up. Okay. You hear the storm <laughs> letting up, but very shortly thereafter, you hear the sound of an incoming dropship. An incoming <clears throat> dropship. Yep. Upon heading outside, you discover that it is not the wildfire. It's a UPP dropship. Either dispatched as a recon ship for the personnel originally stationed at the base, or as a recon unit sent out to investigate it. Standing outside with the drop outside the dropships with rifles raised are five UPP soldiers. Their commander is a middle-aged woman who surprises the PCs by shouting in perfect English, "Drop your weapons and hold your hands where I can see them. Explain yourselves or die on the spot." Well, we outnumber uh, them. What? What's our exact position? Uh, you passed you, through the outside of the base? Yeah, you just went out the front door and then there are all these people with guns pointed at you. Uh, I'm gonna take cover behind the door and swap over to my pulse rifle. Can we bluff it that we got the nuke ready to blow? Uh, you can, if you so choose. But yep, there's no guarantee, there is no guarantee that they will let you go. I mean, we're going to use intimidation for sure. There's seven of us. There's five of them. Yeah. We had our guns like, ready to we're, go. We're going to do this fucking opposed ship. We're going to try to intimidate okay, them. Okay, so... Um, them dropping. Let me check. That's man manipulation, probably. Yeah, it would be manipulation. Oh, let me check the... Um, okay, so, soldier... <coughs> um, empathy... Well, I got six in manipulation, so... Oh, and I can push this twice if I want. Yeah. So, um, F two. So yeah, this person does not have a manipulation skill. So, considering that a soldier by default has empathy two, <laughs> I'm gonna say that you win. So, <clears throat> um, you gesture to Duncan, and he holds up the nuke, and. The woman kind of, and then we just right, we keep our weapons. I want them to keep their weapons pointed, and we make the same demand. Yeah. But they drop their shit. So yeah, so the woman just kind of jumps back when she sees the nuke. She turns around and says something in Russian, and then uh, you, what? But uh, by the way, I have my my gun out, and I'm scoping down right on her. Cassidy, Shame. yeah, yes, Cassidy okay, so, is. Right, so Cassidy, you know, you got your but, gun. Pointed so at... she sees the nuke, but we also we keep our weapons pointed. We basically shout to them to drop their okay. weapons, so, put their hands up in the air. All right, so the guards comply. They, you know, drop their AKs at their feet and they, you know, raise their hands. How many of them were? It? Five. Uh, yeah, there were five, including their commander. Are they all out of drop ship, including the pilot now? Uh, the pilot came out, but he does not have a weapon. He was just kind of checking. Okay, so a total of five, including the pilot guards and the... Well, no, no, I mean five armed people came out. The pilot is a okay. six, and he's just kind of sitting by the ramp, just making sure that everybody's okay. On your knees, hand behind your, your heads. Alright, so the soldiers comply. They kneel down, put their hands uh, behind their heads. Nobody needs to get killed here. Alright, so... Well... <laughs> Nobody I think you're taking a little tour back. of that building back there, Lieutenant. I think they might like what they find. I wink. So I will advance. Uh, yeah, and... can we lock them into the base? <laughs> I mean, well, they can probably do that. That's probably an act of war. So let's have to. What? 
Like firing came, on them would We came be. here to kill our general, so... <laughs> exactly, but shit happens and you have to adapt. We cannot just fire at them, otherwise we'll have to spend all this time hiding the bodies or exfilling the fucking corpses. No, we just tie them up and use their ship. Hey. And then what? Well, then what? After we're done with them? Two ships, especially a drop ship that can defend itself, real useful. We can trade them for some of our prisoners from them. If they have a drop ship, they have a ship in orbit. Well, okay, I just want to consult. Okay, Cody. So, the with the diplomatic ship going on, what 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 would this do really? If we have them tied up or whatever. Um, it would possibly. I mean, it's a very complex situation because on one hand, you did go into UPP territory during a time of officially time of peace uh, with the intentions of assassinating a member of the UPP military. That said, you did not kill them, or you did not kill the guy, and you found evidence that backs up the suspicion that he was going to, you know, commit an act of, like, you know, terrorism, pretty much. So, you have the evidence, you didn't kill the guy, but you're taking UPP prisoners and you did, you know, you were caught, kind of. Yeah, that's the thing. So, it kind of levels out, like, depending on... Well, we'll make up a cover story why, uh, why we were so, there. Then. So, generally, you're probably likely going to uh, avoid starting a war... Because um, you did not... War is bad. Well, especially, you know, because uh, there's been yeah. plenty of war already. Um, I'm just... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this woman, their leader, and I will say... Something happened inside that base yeah, before we arrived. Yeah, let's just cooperate on this. We didn't do shit. We actually caught them on something, so we got the dirt on them. We well, didn't, we I, didn't spill any blood, so we're yeah. Did you some fight. some kind of creature attacked your facility and killed everyone inside before they could even fire a shot? What does that tell you? We don't know. We just got here. We received we received word of a distress call. We did not get the details on what it was for all we know it could have been you we're outside the building can we see that vent with the scratch marks and everything yes because the vents by the door i point to it and i'll oh, yeah, tell point them to what the, i see point to the mold fucking corpses of the dog <laughs> yeah true the the evidence is right before you very well i we got we, i i i just lied to her like we got we got a distress call. There was like noises, and when we got here, there was no one alive. We were just on patrol, and well, that shit happened, and it looks like everyone got wiped out by I don't know what kind of pet projects you have here. But we don't care. But shit hit the fan. So, what is it you want from us? She asks. That dropship of yours, can it fly through the storm? Well, the storm ended. Oh, okay, good. Because the storm ended and, like, pretty much right after it did, the dropship was oh, okay. arrived, like, a couple minutes later, so. Yeah, get us back to our ship. We'll go from there. You have a ship yeah. in orbit? What else would we have gotten here? Wait, what are you saying? What'd you say? Yeah, it's kind of obvious because we got here somehow. It's not like we live here. Yeah. You do realize, though, that this is a breach of international law that you... I point to the briefcase. You do realize that this might be a breach of international law. We had no involvement in that. That was that was strictly the general's decision. Lieutenant said we're answering a distress call. You might not have been involved. The general does have military command in the UPP, which does make it kind of an international incident, which also implicates you. So I would not go talking about uh, us doing the wrong thing when we're responding to a distress call when everyone's getting mauled apart. 
Very well. We will escort you to your ship. So then I'm going to guess that you guys like lead the your captives onto the ship. Captives? Uh well, yeah, you said that you ordered them all to, like, put their hands behind their back and drop their weapons, so... Yeah, yeah, okay, on that sense, yeah. So, I mean, you can leave them behind if you want, or you can take them as hostages. They're like POWs, I guess. I said we let them see just, for themselves just, what's I, inside. Can I just, like, convince her to work with us for now, like, so we just can get this behind us, like... Look, if uh, if this was just your general planning it, I will I will testify on this for the ICC. Don't worry, you will not be implicated, you and your men. But we do have to, like, we respond to a distress call. Your general was found dead, but with a nuclear device. We will have to report this. Can I help him with that? Just, I'm a my my idea is that. Just, hold on, just uh, just make sure we get off world. You do the same. Let whatever people you need to know what happened down here. Not only the general has to be to blame about the shitstorm that happened here. Do we have a deal? So she pauses to think for a moment and then says, Yes, we have a deal. We will take you to your ship. Alright. We'll grab your weapons. You go up front. No offense. Very well. And the way I was going to say that I was going to help is I was going to show my gun and show that it's unfired and show the full magazines. Yeah, like we're decked out with like multiple flamethrowers. Show that I haven't shot guns. anyone. We're like, like armed to the teeth at this point. Yeah. We even got a fucking new briefcase. So. And all of our guns are unshot, though. That's my point. Yeah. We we didn't take these people out. There's more evidence. All right. So we start marching back towards the wildfire with uh, these guys. Lit. Oh like, wait, you're uh, going to the wildfire, not the the UPP ship. You get a pilot. Yeah, we got our fucking pilot. There. We're gonna exfil and Okay. Uh, they're, they're, gonna, they're just gonna come with us until we're off world, and then they well, can uh, do whatever they please. We can have them take us to the ship in their ship. They have a pilot. No, we're gonna exfil on our own stuff. But no, I'm saying they take with their dropship. They take us to our dropship. Oh, they can give us a little ride. Is that possible, right. Cody? Uh. That way we don't have to walk. Yeah. I mean, if that's if that's what you guys want to do, okay. So as long as we can radio our pilot, tell him. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So all right, good call. We'll okay. do that. So you uh, radio Walker. Like uh, I also reach her. My like I stretch out my hand to try to shake her hand. Like what Lieutenant the squad Romero. leader's hand, like the UPP like squad leader. Yep. Yeah. So then she uh, kind of like before she just kind of pauses for a second and then shakes hands with you so like she doesn't seem to completely trust you but the very fact that you disarmed her troops the fact that you have a nuke the fact that you have guns aimed at her the fact that you <laughs> that you know also convinced her that this can be a very reasonable situation yeah and and the fact us. that you know you managed to convince her that you were not responsible for killing all these people something else did and she thinks we were here on a distress call that is true. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you got like you six six successes on that. Um, but so I just imagined uh, Vince McMahon just like all these successive victories over. Like, you guys don't happen to have a a smart gun in there, do you? Smart gun is USCM tech. We we are not that advanced. Fair enough. So. At least they admit it. <laughs> So, hey, you guys aren't USCM either. So, um, the uh, so as you're uh, heading back aboard the um, like heading into the dropship, the creature from before comes we're out of the vent. Our perimeter. We are what? Where from? Uh, well, the do okay. So the vent was by the door. You guys were like. Or at least I, I was under the impression that you were all just kind of walking aboard the dropship. Well, we do keep perimeter. Oh, okay. I'm just imagining, like, you never take your eyes off each other's backs, yeah. you know? There's always well, someone watching six. Well, that said, the creature that attacked Cooper shows up. And, um, 
I guess we're so five people, um, and just we're gonna draw initiative. The androids too. Oh yeah, the Do they androids. have to draw initiative. Um, where, one of the one of the androids has my now? pistol too. Where are we now? Um, well, you were about to board the UPP dropship and fly back to the wildfire. That said, yeah. as you were getting ready to board it, the alien came back because its prey was escaping and it wasn't having any of that, so. Um, so you... All right, can we just, like, like, get people on board as fast as possible? Um, basically, people like like that, like, walking backwards up, up the ramp. Like everyone getting on board while still aiming uh, at the creature. Okay. Um, yeah. So you, Cooper, cover us. Opening, and of course, opening fucking fire on the thing. Yeah. That, that, okay. Wait, who has the big gun? Duncan. Adams. Yeah, Duncan. Adams, Adams, cover us. Close rifle. Yeah. So. Well, everyone cover your asses. Like yeah. back up onto the ramp. So. And, uh, all right. So are we going to? So we're going to draw for initiative. I don't think we I can roll. Well, that's what I mean, like, roll initiative. The problem is I don't have a character sheet for the alien, so I don't know how I'm supposed to do that. Roll your own dice. Oh, I got good numbers. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I'll just roll, um, roll a d6. The card value doesn't work, you have to hit the initiative dice. Yeah, the card thing is very... weird. Do you want high or low? Low. low. Love. Yeah, Great. it literally is the turn order. Like the lower your value is, the yeah, earlier so, you are. Um. All right. So, somebody can somebody just roll for the aliens initiative. So I guess. Uh, all right. So there we go. So his is seven. All right. So the alien will get two turns. Oh, he gets two. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. So Duncan goes oh, first. And then, so it's going to be Duncan, then Chelsea, and then uh, the uh, alien, because the alien had seven. And... Also has a two, right? Wait, well, hold yeah. on. So you're saying that, oh shit, so it attacks first? So it attacks twice. Got... Well, no, it attacks twice. I'm just saying, like, does it attack on two and then on seven? Yeah, yeah. yeah. two separate activations. Okay, so... So we got Cassidy. Well, it does depend on the class it is, but... It's a drone. Yeah, Alright, so I'm gonna roll a d6 for our little buddy here. Um, and so, uh, what's the command for die rolling? Forward slash r. R, and then like... Space d6. Alright, space d6. Okay, so, oh, oh, oh! Head bite. Um, so... It's going. What's the range on this thing, though? On what? Like how far? Where is the creature? It's like just came out the fucking door again. Yeah, it came out. Of, it came out of the vent. And it was just gunning it straight for. Uh, for we're, all, we're all still in the zone, just outside the door. So it's all zone based. So we're like so 20, 30 action. yards, 20, 30 yards away from it, or something. And possibly not yeah. even that. I mean, it's very. The dropship pretty much. Uh, I mean, without bumping anything, but it kind of landed like right out the front door. So. Um, Attacking it anyway. Works, it gets two actions. Its first action, which is a fast action, into the zone, and the zone is the outside area, and then it'll attack. Okay, so it does its attack. It's so nasty. do I, like, roll a die for who it who it goes for, or can I just pick? Well, I mean, you're the GM. You, 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 know, you pick who is Well, I know, but I'm, you. The, I'm, an, I'm very inexperienced as, GM. So. As far as the actual Xenomorphs go, they usually go for the biggest threat first. Okay. So, so whatever it judges to be the biggest threat. So, in that case, it would be Duncan. You would say that. <laughs> but you have a heavy pulse rifle! Okay, alright, I'll take it. Because, I mean, if I didn't... I'll take the instant kill attack. Sure. <laughs> okay. Can um, they just but I do have my, uh, I have my uh, fast action yet, so I should be able to block. Plus, I have an armor of uh, five, so, you know, right, or so, six. So what do you do with the block? Um, how does that work? I so roll my close combat. Look for successes. All right, so um, attack. So, I, so, for oh. the, for, so for the strength, do I roll um, nine base die? Because it says the attack has a strength of nine base dice damage, too. Yeah. 
Zero, you roll, roll nine dice for it. Okay. So I find it hilarious that the one guy with a heavy weapon is now using it to smack the alien in the face. <laughs> <laughs> right. So 96. Okay, so it's got two successes. Okay, so I'm going to do my block first. Oh, just close combat. It says combat. I think it's supposed to say yeah, close combat. Yeah, it should. It's close combat. So you just have to roll over its successes to block it, right? Oh. Yeah. So there's one, and then my armor. Where that's at. Under manipulation. Can I push a block? I'm not sure. No, no you can't. Uh, no, you're yeah, passive yeah. end of this, so. And here's my armor. Ooh, three successes. Three? I only see uh, two, but. I'll take your word for it. Um, wow. Well, and the close combat is three total, yeah. So it, um, all right, let, let, let me kind of think about it. So, do, so would that mean it does any damage? No. It, no, it wouldn't. no he'll, roll his, he'll roll his block, his block will fail, but then he gets his armor roll, which passes. Okay, so basically, so it would uh, take, so hold on, the, the damage is based to so the damage. It doesn't take any damage. Yeah, it's a swing and a miss. Okay, so basically it, it lunges at you, like it fires out its mouth, and then you just kind of like set, like quasi headbutt it, like you ram your head down, and then it just like the, its mouth, <laughs> its mouth, <laughs> mouth like. Rams Adam, did the... you shit your pants again? Yes. <laughs> Anybody bring a change of underwear? Um. Last thing on my mind. So yeah, so it um. It, uh, god damn, what am I trying to say? So, yeah, it basically, it, it fires out its mouth, but it, like, ricochets off of the helmet. Off his helmet. You lucky son of a bitch. Yeah. Very. A little bit of instant death if it hit me. Yep. I know. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, Skull next, crunch. so next initiative, so wait, does the alien attack a second time in a row, or does somebody else attack? So it, it has. It, it, gets two, it goes twice in the initiative order, so then it'll go to whoever's next in the initiative. And then the alien gets a second turn. Okay, later. so... Yeah, okay, so... I think it's me. You, well, actually, okay, so no, hold the alien got two. And then Duncan actually gets to counterattack, because he got three. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, I think with my fast... I'm not going to run away from it, but my fast action, I'm going to back away. Um, and then my slow action, I will shoot it. You already right. used your slow action in blocking it. Um... Oh, I don't think that's a slow action. No. Uh, I think that would be a fast action. It block. is actually a fast action. Was it block? Oh, sorry, it's a fast action. Yeah, block is fast action, and then so yeah, I'm shoot sure. is Overwatch, Overwatch is slow. Sorry. No, it's no problem. We're it's a new game, so yeah. So, so here's my gun attack. Hopefully, it includes the bonus die. Um, do I have any modifier plus or minus? Um. On what? My ranged attack. Uh, if you're shooting it at extreme close range, it's a minus two or a minus three, unless you're using a specialized weapon. Yeah, hold on, let me check. Um, so range combat. What, is a shotgun one of those weapons that works at extreme close? Uh, yeah, shotgun. Well, I think I think it is. Yes, yeah, I think shotguns work. Don't get the shotguns and pistols don't get right. the minus three engaged. I think. Yeah. So unfortunately, I did not have that in my notes. So I mean, I got to kind of leave it up to somebody else to. Um. To really like do that, determine the. It's all good, man. Nobody's worried here. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's a minus minus two to your range. Oh no, that's a sneak attack. Wrong tape. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's a minus three at, at engaged ranged. Is he engaged though? Because he backed up. Uh, well, he couldn't back up because he used his fast. Oh right. Well, you're saying he did or he didn't. So he can't have used his move action to back up because he already used that type of action. Yeah, because he blocked. So basically, he it's still right in his face. Okay, so it's still right in his face. Okay. So when does my fast action reset at the beginning of the turn at order? The, then? Yeah, at the beginning of the turn order. Okay, because yeah. some some games are like it resets on your turn. Yeah, it's not your turn. It's at the beginning of the initiative. Yeah, if it says that, that's fine. Yeah, because whoever attacked. Okay, so Chelsea attacks next. It's still my turn, and I still have an attack. Yeah. Oh, don't forget, you guys have story points. Yeah. So I'm going to shoot now, and you said you just want me to do a negative three. Is that right? Yeah, uh, negative three to your... Uh, to your Hopefully that, this includes my pulse rifle bonus. I don't know if it will. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, you didn't hit it. 
or at least I don't see it. No, but I'm gonna do the story point. No, I'm gonna do the stress. I'm gonna shoot again. All right, you're gonna. So I'll take one, one stress. stress. All right. Yep, precisely. So wait, was that firing on full auto or? No. Okay. Sure. No reason to. Yeah. So there's one success there. Okay, so one success. No stress. And that means you for do... three damage. Okay, so you... and it halves his armor. So you roll half his armor. Die. Okay. Um. So half is. Let me pull up the note on his. Um. Right, so his armor is eight. So I would roll four die then. Yep. Okay. So. Um. All right. So four d six. Okay, and he got no successes. Oh yes. Nice. So wait, does that mean you just attack it? Like straight? I'm gonna stick my gun in his mouth he and it does opens not up, negate the thing. and I'm gonna pull the trigger. All right, so, um, so you just do damage to his health, or does that destroy his armor? Triple, triple health. Yeah, three, three damage to his health. Three damage to his health. And then okay, acid so, uh, oh, the acid splash is gonna be fun. Oh fuck! Yeah, I didn't have anything on. Oh, do I have anything on acid splash? Okay, so it's got seven health. And you did three damage to it, so. Alright, so. Three, alright, so four, so it's got four health left. Um, you hit it, it's pretty pissed. Screams out in pain. Um, but it is still still going, so. Um, and so Xeno Acid, let me check what that is. So acid oh, bye bye. Yeah. Wait, you, whoa. Uh, the drone has an acid splash rating of eight. Plus the three damage. Yep. Eight Eleven dice. dice. <laughs> this is why you use the flamethrowers, people. <laughs> okay, so we didn't up. know it has acid. It's not something that's, our characters that's knew. That's true. Yeah. Oh, okay, you didn't know yet. So oh, hold it. So fuck. now I we was, do. Nobody, none of our characters five five. would have known that. How how many um, am I rolling? Eleven. All right. So R D R eleven D six. It got one success. And I can roll Fuck my yeah. armor. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, but if you take too much damage, then your armor goes down as well. Hold on. Yeah, your armor uh, can... Two success, so I don't take anything. Okay. Ooh, you dodge. So, yeah, the acid, like, flies past, barely scratches the paint on your armor. Oh, my God. Um, and I'm going to notice that. Is that right or no? Is what right? That I noticed armor... that it's acidic blood. Yeah, yeah well, armor rating is reduced by one for every success you get as the acid eats through it. Wait, what now? So, so his armor rating is reduced by one because he got a success. Oh yeah. Um. So his armor. So what? It goes down to five. I'm guess it's like steaming and hissing, right? Yeah. Like yeah. You, know, you. So wait. If so, it did damage, right? To the armor. It, no, he. No, he said he sa he saved on his armor, but because he saved it on his armor, the acid. Uh, reduces the armor by one because he made, he made one that's what that's what I'm checked so basically like okay. it the acid avoids his chest but it hits his right shoulder plate and like fries it off so his yeah, so armor rating of five instead of six now exactly uh as soon as it starts to hiss I just rip I just reach over and I rip off the shoulder pad and I throw it on the ground well oh. no if you touch it you're gonna burn your fingers so so yeah Maybe now mildly. Corporal Adams knows that it bleeds acid so, It'll avoid that again. so yeah, so okay, so next up to bat is Cassidy. Oh, or no, not Cassidy, okay. not Cassidy, my bad. Uh Chelsea McKee, so Um I am gonna take an Overwatch action for as soon as the alien moves away from him and they'll flame it. Um, okay, Overwatch is Um uh, Overwatch is a slow. Okay, it's a slow action. I don't see it on the list. Uh, it's under, um, it is there. Because I have a list of, uh, slow actions and fast actions that I don't see Overwatch. Is that, like, a character ability? No, no, no. It's, it's a range. fast action. I'm pretty sure. Is it a fast? It's a fast. It's fast. It's fast. So you take the Overwatch actions are fast, and you have to keep your slow action to shoot it. That's right, isn't it? Oh, yeah. oh assume Overwatch position. There it is. Um, the yeah, basically what happens is, is you... Is... you is slow. You yeah, take so you take Overwatch, then, yeah. and then any time between now and your turn, you can choose to fire. Okay. So I'm, just, I'm going to take the Overwatch action, ready for when the alien breaks away to 
flavor. Okay. Also, so... this might be relevant. Also, if you do Overwatch and you choose to take your action to fire, then you roll before anyone else does. Okay. So. Okay. so... <laughs> um. All right. So... Initiative at your own leisure. It's nice. All right. So then, so the second, so the alien gets to attack again. I think because okay, let me check. So. Chelsea had four. Uh, then the alien has seven. And then Rico has eight. So yeah, then the alien attacks again. Um, since Duncan is closest to him, um, he still goes after Duncan. So hold on. R, uh, D6. Okay, what so... What did McKee roll a four, though? Um... No, I thought McKee used her actions yeah, I, for... Yeah, I, 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 took, I took the Overwatch action. Yeah, you're on Overwatch, so you can choose oh, whatever right. you want. Oh, that's right. Um, so, it... Um, where's... Acid? Okay, there it is. Oh, no, no, it's not Acid. I need to look at his attacks. Cause, so, the alien got a five. Do you want to shoot it before it can attack him? No, because I'll burn him as well, because he's engaged. Oof. Yeah. Um, sure. Oh, but they could kill him right away! Oh no, it's got something worse in mind. Uh, attack 5, capture for the hive. The Xeno attacks with its venom spike tail with 10 base die, damage 1. Yeah, should have eaten acid. Alright, so... Uh, 10 base die. Um, let me roll that. Um, God damn it. Alright. R10 D6. And it did not get or wait, hold on. Um, the attack causes any damage, so it doesn't get any success. It misses. So, yeah, so the alien... Uh... I think the alien's starting to realize how big Adams is. And fucking Adam <laughs> catches its hand. It actually hits him. Back. It actually hits him, but he just rips it out and laughs at it. Or no... Or well, that's not like a it really should... hearty, deep that... laugh. No, so it, like it I fires. It Adam launches. looks like the heavy from TF2. Yeah, so then like it shoots his tail at him, and then he like karate chops it away from his face. <laughs> yeah. And then all right, so most people would be dead right now. So it misses. Uh, we are getting so lucky. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, they are the best of the best. So. Knock on wood, people. All right, so um, you missed, or he missed. I mean, um. So, if McKee wants to shoot it, uh, you said you didn't, though, right? Because the acid? Nope, I'm, I'm holding. Alright, so that's my turn, right? Um, as Cassidy? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, your initiative is eight. Or, no, well, hold, hold, hold on, wait. Um, we have two eights. Yeah, two eights. So, there's Rico and Cooper, so... Um, uh, oh, you... I, I say... Romero, get that thing off, or I'll take it out. Off him. Yeah. Um, so, tell you what, how about, um, I will roll a die to see who goes first, uh, Romero or Cooper. So if it's like one to three, then I'll say Cooper, and then four to six is Romero. Okay, does that sound good? Mm. Uh, yeah, okay. Alright, D6. Okay, so, wow, it's a one. Alright, so, Cooper, uh, it's your turn. Uh, I just want to flame him. Okay. Here's hoping you don't hit Duncan. Wait, we got three eights. What? Uh, uh what? Oh, what? Two. Okay, um... R Romero also got an eight. But, no, there's two yeah, eights. There's and Cooper and... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I got an eight. I got a ten. My fault. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Um, so, and that's why I said, like, for a tiebreaker, I, I rolled a single d6. Okay, so, um, Cooper, you have a flamethrower. She can use her successes to push back, you know. Oh, right. What do you mean? Push Is that a range combat option, like a stunt, just to push back? Uh, so is, let me them. check um, if I have it. Stunt? No, I don't have the stunts open. Damn it! I'm missing so much. Um, but yeah. I'm pretty. I've, I've heard of it several times now. I'm pretty yeah, sure you can push I've back. Got, I've got the book in front of me. Okay. I play the stunts if you want. Yeah, I don't have the book on my desk because I don't have uh, the room. Stunts for every... Uh, well, PDF, so it's really easy. <laughs> uh, for every success you roll, you can inflict one more point of damage. You can pin down your enemy. You can position yourself to exchange your initiative score. 
you target drops a weapon or your opponent falls to the ground or is pushed back. We need the fucking pushback. Alright, so yeah. let's see if you get a multiple successes. I only have four. Uh, so I roll for range combat? Yes. Yeah, but doesn't the flamethrower give you one bonus or does it not? Good question. Um, I don't think the flamethrower gave you didn't say any bonus. bonus. Oh, okay. It's like a primitive type of thing. Oh, uh... Success there. Oh wait, that's... That's a six... Wait. Uh, yeah, no bonuses with the flamethrower. What so. is that? That's a what? good question. Six. You roll a success on your stress yeah, die. Yeah. It's, it's still a success, but it's a success on your stress die. So... Yeah, that's a double-edged sword of stress. Die. So your stress goes up by one point, then? No, yeah. no, no. She succeeded. Oh, it's just no. success. Yeah, oh. Just success. Oh. The um, uh, that's the thing about the, the base dice. Uh, if you roll one with a base dice, you do not take any, any panic from that. Um, you do, of course, with the panic dice, but the panic dice also have a six side, which you can see here now, so you can actually roll successful thing with panic dice. Yeah, which is why increasing your panic also increases your chances of success. Okay, so you got a success on it. Um, can I use the pushback then? You know, you need a stun for that. Yeah, you need extra. If you if you have two or more, then you can do stuns. But, you but I can use my story point. Can you? Yeah. Right. You can change a die to a success with the story point. Use All right. the story point for an extra success. Yes. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna use it. Okay, so you use so mark off the story point. All right, so you use it to, um, the stream of fire is coming towards it, and the thing like squeals and kind of jumps back. So I'll say it's not in engage range with Duncan. You push it back to short. Smoke him. Yeah, so, um, and then it would cause one point of damage. So, did somebody say the flamethrower, like, does bonus damage on the alien? Yeah, so the start of, start of it's going to take, uh, it's basically going to be on fire with an intensity of nine, I think. I will double check. So wherever I put That's right, I think. Um, uh, at the start of every round, it takes, it's like acid, basically. It'll take another, it'll take another roll. Yeah. And the intensity decreases every round, unless it gets put out. Yeah, I'm kind of confused because I've never run combat, let alone one with an alien. So, uh, so, uh, so the the alien is uh, the alien takes two damage now. Okay, so he, all right, let me look at it. Uh, like, so you messed with the wrong squadron. Yeah, yeah, and the armor rating halves against uh, attack with flamethrower. Right, yeah. So he automatically takes uh, three damage. Well, he you said he, he, he still gets his armor, so he takes two damage, but gets to roll his armor, but it's half because of his fire. Okay. Yep. So, make his armor save. All right, so um, let me do a roll. So his armor is still eight. No, it's so, four now. Oh, it's oh, it's four now. So I have to roll yeah. four die. Okay, uh, roll four d six. Okay, so he didn't get any successes. Nice. Um, yeah, it should be wrapped up within ten minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, so it, it takes two damage now. It's then set on fire. Yep. So you roll nine dice. So I rolled for every success. It takes a point of damage. So I'm rolling nine damage. now. Yeah. I roll nine d six. Oh. Oh no. Wow. Jesus. Wow. So it takes a further. Can you push that? No damage. It doesn't take any damage because he hasn't got any successes. So it's only on successes it will take more damage. You push that shit or. Uh... Wait, who can... It's fine now, but it's, uh, it's 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 on fire. So at the start of the round, it's going to take damage again. Oh right. Okay, so then, all right. So now it's Rico's turn. And wait, should I automatically roll the success because it's still on fire, or should Rico? Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, no, you didn't get any successes, so it's not on fire. It's only on fire if you get any successes. Okay. So you're fine. So yeah, it didn't take, it didn't take anything from the from the, from the initial fire. All right. It's only if you roll successes it skips put this ball fire. Alright. But alright, so it's but its health did decrease. By the yeah, two from the yeah, fire. The okay. Two damage from the initial shot. Okay. Um alright, so Rico. Um Yeah. I put up the fucking gun and shoot. Uh like you just like aim at it, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Um so you have a pulse rifle, right? 
Yep. All right, so uh, give me a ranged combat roll. Uh-huh. Oh! Ooh. Okay. Let's see. Here come the panic. Ah, fuck. What'd you do? It's a seven. Seven. He rolled a six, plus one, seven. It's still a success. Yeah. yeah, but he's still gonna panic table. So what was the panic? I, th I think it's nervous twitch, but uh, is it... nine no, is what? Eight it is. is twitch. I think yes. seven is just eight is tremble. Seven is yeah, twitch. or something. <laughs> or where the what page was panic on again? Uh, One hundred three, I think. Yeah, 103, uh, 104. What a five. Um, uh, nervous twitch. Your stress level and the stress level of friendly pieces in short range of you increased by one. Oh, well. Everyone. Yeah, everybody. So, everybody. All right. I uh, still kick that. ass on it. Yeah, okay, so so you got a success, so you did. So he yeah. just, like, hits it with a round and blood flies everywhere, and we're all like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, what else? he shouts and screams like a big girl. Like, ah, yeah. Uh... I can roll that one out. All right. Um, damages. Pulse rifle damage is two. All right, so damage of two, and then the armor is half. Additional one, so you can push it. No, so you could do damage three. So I just click attack on the thing here. No, no, you've already done damage. You've already attacked. Yeah. So okay. one success is a success. That's it. You do two damage. You've then got an additional dice for a stunt, so you can spend that to apply additional damage. So you, if you want, you can do three damage, or you can try something else, like uh, changing your initiative order. You could push it further back as well. Yeah, that's what I want. And if you have a story wanna... point, you can use that. Like Cooper... Uh, Ooh, you could, yeah. Yeah, Cooper did that. More damage. Uh, how much more health do you think this fucker has? I mean, I just pump it's damage. It's big. Damage. Yeah, oh, whatever. Uh, story point, I'm going to spend it now. Slow. Um, okay, so I wanna kick that fucker back a bit more with my boot, and then just, like, pump it full. So you did, so you're doing three damage of it? Or four? Uh, yeah. Okay, so three. You create more, I wanna create more distance. Okay, so then you push it away from you, so it's at short. Or, well, it wasn't engaged. Um, how about medium? Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, alright, so, so now it's at medium range, and it's kind of, like, away from everybody, so, um, you, so I'm rolling for his armor, so wait, um, uh, I guess it's armor still eight, or did, did I miss something, did it, did it go down to four? Uh, does the pulse rifle have armor piercing? It does. It has, it so, does. okay, so then I just roll four anyways, okay, so yeah, R, yeah. four, D, six. And for each success, you remove one damage, and you got none. So, uh, and now I roll with the uh, rifle, or does it work? Now, didn't you already roll? Yeah, no, no you, you don't. Roll. You don't need to roll. Uh, okay. Why the fuck is that whole rifle menu? There? Um. All right. So, uh, yeah, you just like fire burst upward like Vasquez did in the med lab, and then bullets like ride up from its shoulder to its head. Its head explodes. And it just drops to the ground sideways. So you kill it. Yeah. I'm very. He probably would have killed it too, because I think he missed a bonus from his gun. Uh, Cassidy is is visibly upset that she didn't get to yeah. kill it. <laughs> I think you actually get to roll more dice too, because you didn't roll your. You click on the weapon next time. Attack. That rolls your bonus attack damage. Okay, so oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. All right, so um, yeah, so it's dead, and so everybody's. Piling aboard the dropships as planned. Yeah, yeah. I think I might shoot it one more time if I can, just to make sure. Can we take it with us? Uh, no, no. Because Why it's not? because it's look leaking, at my shoulder pad. It's leaking. It's leaking yeah. yeah, it's leaking uh, acid. It's going to burn through the bottom of the dropship. If we if we <laughs> if we had a couple days, we could drain it, but we don't. Yeah, yeah. You just have to hightail it. Noises. I look at the UPP people and I and I say that's what killed your man. So right. can I just say, if we hadn't been so lucky, this might have turned out way worse. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it gave that, me. I could have been dead in the first act. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so you and your comrades, uh, r you know, rush aboard the dropship, and you get the UPP pilot to take you over to uh, Wildfire. So after yeah. a really short flight, you know, you're over by uh, Wildfire. You get the, um, you know, like you get everybody aboard the dropship. By this point, uh, Walker's got it fixed. Uh, yes, Cassidy, I will. Um, cool. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. And thanks for joining. So See you around. Um, but so you guys, um, you know, you take off and you're on route. Before back. we take off, is there anything of value? Me strap ship. Anything? Uh, Can we still nuke the place? Uh, no. We killed it. We killed the monster. Yeah. What if there's more? It's not our mission. Yep. Not our problem. Got out. Yeah. So it's their so, problem now. Yeah. So um, eventually you make it back, back to the Castaneda without any complications. Although your future is uncertain between the actions you've taken and the discoveries you've made. All that matters for the time being is you made it back to the ship safe and sound. Your mission was a success, even with an enormous unknown variable thrown into the mix. Following the harrowing retreat from LV-416, you all head off to the bar for a stiff drink. But, with your backs turned to the dropship, you fail to notice a thick, dripping fluid coming out of the landing gear. Of course. And the best part, as kind of like a reward for everybody surviving, is uh, there is a special message for the highest ranking player, so that would be Rico. Um... Alright, so, uh, edit, alright, and then it will be in Rico's Story journal. Time. So, alright, tell me if you can see that, you should be able to. Yeah. So, just dub in the respective roles, so. Alright, all gather around, kids. Story time. Well, it's just, that's not really a story, it's just like an end message. <laughs> no. Alright. Lieutenant Romero. TQ4.4.619 or 86E Echo Niner. Operation Dusk Wings was a success. Uh, General Al Alexander uh, what was it? Severov. Severov is confirmed KIA. Uh, this is very hard to read. Like uh, this, I am so. sorry. Um, I yeah. just try to make it where there are different options. Yeah, I know. Um, so, I mean, you don't have to KIA, read it, but, but not by our hands. We took no casualties uh, to a task force Reaper. Be advised, the entire enemy force stationed at the target base in LV-416 was killed off by an unidentified but highly dangerous hostile organism. There may be more of them out there, but save the discussion for when we reach Gateway Station. Lieutenant Romero out. And that's it. That's Operation Duskwings. Nice. Thanks, too. That's cool. Thanks. I love this shit. Everyone is alive. Yep. I, you made me realize with this thing that, holy shit, I can't wait for even more material on uh, Marines and, and uh, Colonial Marines, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. this shit is actually great. Thank you. Yeah, I was so fucking scared that everybody was going to be like disappointed by it, but hell no. Right. It would have sucked to die. Like, uh, <laughs> like flesh out the world, the base a bit more. Um, well, I mean, like I said, few, like if this was a success, up your sleeve. But holy shit, it was. Um, it, it it felt like this could be. Re it, it felt like uh, this can be an early draft to something that can be really official stuff. You know. Yeah. Um, Everything was fine. Like, all the players were, went well together, and yeah, yeah. you mastered it. So, I mean, at this point, if you guys want to uh, take turns reading your agendas, and, I mean, Rico, I know you definitely wanted to, so uh, I'll let you go <laughs> first. Tell us. All right. Because he got stiffed in the first act, and that's something I felt yeah. bad for him about. Holy fuck. Yeah, you should set up some other requirement, like, well, uh, if you guys have any ideas, just like DM me. So. Yeah, just keep them simple, um, right? So it basically came down to that uh, right. this lieutenant, like Romero, already had a scuffle with this asshole general back in twenty one sixty two during uh, a campaign, and mm -hmm. wiped out half the unit. 
So the uh, Romero wanted to be the one to put the bullet in Severov's face. But he can still do that. Yeah, so I still. I mean, technically, it. yeah, he could have. Technically, I mean, he, he could have exploited but it, but <laughs> like he could have just shot him in the head, like there, mission accomplished. <laughs> so. So, so that's kind of the thing. The second one was uh, doesn't matter what Butcher Severov. Um, Slay the alien, bring body back as ab evidence of bravery skill. Oh. Failure to assassinate. Yeah, then so, yeah. push to bring the body back one. more. Yeah, I, I, th that's something I real. I looked at the agenda. I was like, God damn it, I forgot. <laughs> so yeah, Romero definitely did kind of get stiff. I might we have need, to. We need like um, some kind of acid resistant body bag or something. Yeah. Like that you could find in the base, maybe. You know? Yeah, that's a good idea. I should, I should. Or drain the blood out or something. I don't know. Yeah, like fine. I think you could have pushed it a little bit more. Like, yeah, I mean, like I said, this was just like a test run just to see how the. Yeah, yeah it's and... just a li it's just the little details, you know. Yeah. But definitely the overall structure and contents of this uh, one shot. Oh, this is really good stuff. Yeah. I have plans Especially for another story. People who so. love the marine stuff. Yeah. Is... Yeah. Um, but I definitely have plans to do another, um, like, one-shot custom, so awesome. like I ha have to write like it, but... I like these one-shots. What now? I like these one-shots. Okay, because like I said, I'll definitely let you guys know, because I have plans for one that plays totally differently than this one, but... Uh, yeah, I think this is a good group yeah. to get this group again. Okay, so um, who else yeah. wants to read their agendas? The reason why I had to go in and ask about agendas agendas um, because uh, according to my agenda one when we were all in that lovely room I would have just stepped outside and flamed you all uh, as, <laughs> you it. Yeah. as you were all traitors so uh, whoops I had to check to see what agenda two was before I did that <laughs> wait so <laughs> yeah so as, uh, for as Chelsea that's what you were talking about yeah okay so so yeah that was your first part and then if you want to mention well I mean if you want to read it then well I sabotaged the plane, no one was getting out alive. Yeah, like, his his agenda was basically what? to sabotage the mission. He was the one who sabotaged the engine. Yep. I stole the starter cap. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Oh, private whispering. Yeah, so, um... Uh, and that's why, if you guys noticed the chat, yeah, you were seeing, uh, seeing me saying, like, uh-huh, and okay, and gotcha a lot, and you're, like, probably wondering, like, what the hell is he talking about? That's just me, like, messaging you guys, and, like, okay, I'll, I'm, I'm aware of this. I mean, I was reading the chat the whole time, so, I mean, like, I was seeing what you guys were doing. I personally didn't notice you oh, okay. doing that. Well, I mean, that's I just... didn't notice. That. I couldn't tell that you were busy typing. Yeah, well, I was just mentioning that to, um... In response to people just letting them know that I was seeing it. Um, yeah. So it wasn't obvious. Then. So that was um, McKee's agenda. So uh, Duncan, do you want to mention yours? Yeah. Because yours was yeah, funny. For sure. so. so my first objective is, you know, I'm the corporal. I got no money, so um, uh, for, the pay really sucks. You're a little more than a slave. Fight some high value. Um, Basically, that's what I was trying to do. I was looking through the dead bodies, and then the nuke, I knew that was a big money, so I was making sure that gets back. And then the second phase was basically we had to get out of there, not, not stake shelter like we were doing, so that's why I was pushing the lieutenant to, let's get out of here, let's get to the ship. That was my agenda. All right, so what about you, uh, Cooper? Yeah, my first one is not let anybody get hurt. Uh, and then the second one, after uh, engaging with the alien, <laughs> I need to kill this son of a bitch. So it's a singular, so I, I guess I succeed. Yeah, it's a nice, nice objective. They yeah. go easily. Okay, and then because uh, Cassidy left, so Cassidy, Romero seems a bit unhinged. <laughs> As a talented and by-the-book soldier with a flawless record, don't let him do anything stupid or anything that endangers the squad. Act 2, you're not sure which is more dangerous, the huge goddamn alien with sharp claws and spring-loaded jaws, or your wingnut commanding officer trying to kill it. You've got several options on how to deal with this predicament, ranging from standing up to him and convincing him to listen to reason, to committing treason to save lives. Oh, it's up wow. to you, but one way or another, make sure Romero fails in his crazy quest before he gets somebody killed. 
Oh. So, so those are the agendas, and that was um, Operation Duskwings. So, um, yeah, some of the agendas were pretty easy, and some were pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, so I, I maybe was, balance. I was more. mainly, yeah, I was mainly writing the agendas as like story motivation. So. Thanks for that, but I've been sitting on this for about an hour, so I need to go and do it, so I'll speak to you later. Alright, see ya, thanks for playing. See you around.